HT TV Sports on Adelphia presents the 1999 New York State Class B Championship game as the Harrison Huskies from Section 1 take on the defending New York State champs, the Lackawanna Steelers from Section 6. We are live from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Hello again, everybody. Chris Brown along with Walt Sears and Mark Collins. And boy, what a matchup we have for you today. Two teams on a virtual collision course all season long, ranked number one and two in the state all season long. Both teams undefeated. And to top it off, it is a repeat matchup of last year's state final, which Lackawanna won 22 to 18. And let's take a look at some of the highlights from last year's final. And it was an inauspicious start for the Steelers as Wade Turner gets his bell rung early. And as we see on the replay here, Turner gets upended after falling to the turf. And in comes the late hit. Turner out, Joe West in. And he fills the void nicely on this 60-yard touchdown run. They would also score on the two-point conversion, and Lackawanna would draw first blood, leading eight to nothing. Harrison would answer before the half with who else? Sam Maldonado. 41 yards for the touchdown here, but the Huskies would fail on the extra point attempt, so they would trail eight to six at the break. But early in the third quarter, Harrison would take its first lead of the day on Maldonado's second touchdown. This one, 22 yards to make it 12 to eight Huskies. Wade Turner returned to the game and follows his blockers for a five yard touchdown run to regain the lead for the Steelers, 14 to 12, and he was pumped. Lackawanna would pad their lead with Joe West's second touchdown of the day. Makes a nice cutback here at the sideline to avoid the final two tacklers for a 32-yard run. On top of that, he's very fortunate on the two-point conversion. This one could have been intercepted. We will see here the throw out into the flat. Almost picked off, but West somehow comes up with it and is happy. Gives us the shimmy shake for a 22-12 advantage. But Harrison was not done. Maldonado with a four-yard touchdown run to bring the Huskies within four. But then the coaching chess match ensued. You see the punter, Bo Sirica, calling timeout. Lackawanna head coach Bill Moore sees that Harrison has pulled Maldonado off the punt return team to rest him for the final drive. Moore decides to huddle up the troops, calls a fake punt to get the first down and maintain possession with a couple of minutes to play. As it turns out, the fake works. Kowalski runs to the left, gets the first down, and the Steelers are able to run out the clock and it's celebration time for the Lackawanna Steelers as for the second year in a row, they win the New York State Class B state title 22 to 18. Yeah, they came out on top, I'll tell you, Chris, but it was a close football game right down to the wire and you saw in the highlights there, Bill Moore has to call a fake punt on fourth and eight on the 50 yard line and his team is winning the football game with four minutes to go. Why does he do that? Because he doesn't want to punt it and give opportunity to Sammy Maldonado to touch that football one more time because I believe there's a good chance that his defense doesn't stop him. This kid is obviously the best back New York's ever produced. There's no question about it. His statistics show it. You can look at it right there. 7,296 yards and 96 touchdowns in his career. He is 21st on the list all-time leading rushers in the nation. And this year alone, he's rushed for close to 3,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, and there you can look at it. He's averaging almost 13 yards a carry. This kid is the real deal. He's got the size, 6'2", 215, the speed. He's strong as a bull and as quick as lightning. And I got one word for him, and that is phenom. And I'm telling you, Walter John Sears, the Lackawanna Steelers down here in the field have a monumental task in containing number five, Sammy Maldonado. Well, if there's any defensive team that can stop or contain Sammy Maldonado, it has got to be the defending two-time New York State Class B champion Lackawanna Steelers and their ferocious, hard-hitting defense that features speed, more speed, and quickness. And all the credit has got to go to this man and his coaching staff for not only their defense, but all their success. Bill Moore and his staff Guys, I don't think they really get the credit or recognition that they deserve around the state or even in Western New York. They right now could be the best coaching staff in New York State, period, bar none. 37 straight wins. They've won 91% of the game since Moore's been coached the last six years and back-to-back -back New York State titles. I mean, how do you match that? And when you consider that in high school football, fellows, every year 
you get a new deck of cards and new players, so you're dealt the hand that you get. It's very, very difficult to win year after year, but yet here they are again, three years in a row, 37 in a row, and Mark, let me remind you, Lackawanna beat Harrison here last year, 22 to 18 for the title. Yeah, but let me remind you, you saw the highlights there. Sammy Maldonado was just warming up in the fourth quarter. Three touchdowns, 178 yards. You know, one more touch with that football, and I think Harrison wins it last year, but... But he didn't get that touch mark, and he didn't get that opportunity, folks. And Lackawanna went on to win that football game, as we mentioned, 22 to 18, and win the state championship. Now, if Sammy Maldonado, arguably, yes, is the best back in New York State, maybe in history, Lackawanna then, guys, has the best combined backfield in New York State, maybe in New York State history. They've got four weapons, starting with their elusive quarterback, Rodney Randolph, who can pass and he can throw a double threat. Then there are two great junior running backs, both extremely quick and powerful, Melvin Wilder and Deion Jones. And then their main man, Joe the Best West, number eight. He arguably could be the best back in New York State. Remember, he was the MVP of this game last year, and Joe West has just had a tremendous season and a tremendous career at Lackawanna High School. Let's take a look at his career statistics. 3,224 yards, 36 touchdowns. Now remember, that was not as a featured back. Since his sophomore year, he has not been the featured back till this year. Now this year, as a featured back, it gets better for Joe West statistically. 214 carries, 1,923 yards, and 21 touchdowns, almost 10 yards a pop. And I mention again, Joe West last year was the MVP of this football game, Mark Collins. He is without a doubt one of the smoothest runners that I've ever seen or any of us have ever seen at the high school level. So you can take Sammy Maldonado. He's a great one, a great one. But I think Joe West is a great one, too, and I'll take my chances with Joe West. All right, I'm going to step in here as moderator and agree that both are great running backs and it's just one piece of this championship game. Let's see what the rest of the team has to do for Harrison and Lackawanna, respectively. We'll start with you, Mark. Go over the keys to the game for the Harrison Huskies. Well, I'll tell you, well, you had a lot of weapons, but for the Huskies, they got one big one, and that's Sammy Maldonado, and it's a heavy dosage of Sammy today. Lackawanna's going to see him. They like to give him the football at least 30 times a football game. Number two, though, is a real key, no turnovers. Last year in the state finals here, you remember, they turned it over twice. One cost them points, one cost them field position. Could not afford a turnover today. And the third key right there, you know it, stop the big plays. You saw in the highlights, Joey West last year, went for that 60-yard touchdown. They'll get one or two a football game if you're not careful. How about the keys for Lackawanna, Walt? Well, this is going to be extremely difficult for the Lackawanna Steelers. Number one, they have to mold the meter, the Maldonado meter, slow it down, keep him under 200 yards. That sounds like a lot of yards, but remember, Maldonado had 700 yards and 11 touchdowns the last two playoff games. Now, number two for Lackawanna could be very important. Special teams, they had some breakdowns last week. Harrison challenged Lackawanna last year and kicked off to them. No one does that in Western New York. Maybe the Steelers can pop one. And number three, the Wild Wild West Show. The West Wheel. It might spin out of control. He might hit two or three hundred. <laughs> Where will it stop? No one knows. Okay, no, no doubt the running back matchups are huge, but there are some underlying stories in this game as well to see who has the edge and where we take a look at our edge board now between Harrison and Lackawanna and not surprisingly there are a lot of draws on this edge board and we start at quarterback both quarterbacks don't throw the ball much Randolph to video both threw for just over 600 yards this season the quarterbacks are very similar in their style of play the running game that's a draw while Maldonado might be the best all by himself Lackawanna's depth is the equalizer there. Defense, it's virtually dead even there as well. Special teams, we're going to give the edge to Harrison. Last week in the state semifinal, Lackawanna's special teams almost cost them the game against Christian Brothers Academy. So they got to be aware of the return game. Maldonado, for the first time this year, might be in the return game today. And then finally, intangibles, Lackawanna has the edge for a couple of reasons. Number one, Bill Moore and his coaching staff, arguably the best in New York State, and when you get to this level, coaching makes a huge difference. Number two, a lot of emotion on this team. Last week, Lackawanna School District suffered a tragic loss. Cheerleader and athlete at Lackawanna High School, Natasha Ra Radford, passed away an untimely death, and the players, very emotional. They dedicated last week's game to her. They're dedicating this week's game to her as well. On top of that, they have her initials on their helmets here today. So in honor of her and the Lackawanna community and all the people in Western New York, 
here at HTTV Sports, we're going to observe a moment of silence in her honor. Lackawanna head coach Bill Moore said it best last week. He said, life is precious, football is just a game. But it is the biggest game of the season, and we'll have it for you here next on HTTV Sports. It's the New York State Class B State Championship, Lackawanna and Harrison, coming up next. A Cablevision Millennium Minute. Spotlight on Harrison. Well, live from the Carrier Dome, Walter John Sears along with Mark Collins. And again, we're at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse, New York, for this Class B championship. Now let's go down to the referee, Jerry Terwilliger. Well, let's take a look first at the coaches, Arthur Troilo. Arthur Troilo from Harrison, New York, born and raised there, high school Harrison, college Fordham, sports, high school football, basketball, lacrosse, and college football honors first team all new york state all ecac 82 fordham mvp and hobbies being a dad and of course 14th year for him 89 38 and one three sectional appearances coaching philosophy take care of small things do what's right and of course they reached the final last year this year they hope to get past lackawanna and make that final step into a championship and a greatness of their team. Well, Lackawanna has already been renowned as a great team. They're two-time defending New York State champions, and William C. Moore is their head coach, born 127-47. Lackawanna, New York, high school Baker Victory, College Ottawa University. Played high school football, basketball, baseball, college football, honors at Baker Victory, the Hall of Fame, hobbies, well, he doesn't really have any. He's had a long and checkered career, but this is his second stint back as the head coach, and it's been tremendous. 64 and 6, back to back New York State Class B championship. His philosophy, hard work in class and hard work in practice, means hard work after football. And Mark Collins, the Harrison Huskies, will receive the football first, and it will be Dave Sentesi kicking off. And Maldonado, for the first time all year, is back to receive on the kickoffs. Well, we talked to the coach, uh, Trello, and he said, hey, this is the championship football game. We haven't had him back there all year, but no doubt about it, he's going to be there today, Well, And Sentesi will kick it away from Maldonado. Obviously, he does not want him to handle a football. Zampella picks it up. Zampella trying to reverse his field. is across the 20 and out to the 21, where he is swarmed under by the Lackawanna special team. Now, let's take a look at the quarterback for this game for the Harrison Huskies. Paul Servideo, Paul in the 1999 season, 35 for 73, 376 yards, Mark, 11 touchdowns and three interceptions. He's been very workmanlike. He's a very smart quarterback. Yeah, he's a perfect type quarterback. The coach loves this kind of real headsy wall, good athlete, makes good decisions, reads well, and really, uh, you know, he can throw the ball too. He's thrown 11 touchdowns, only three interceptions. First and 10, first play of the game from the 22-yard line, and here's Maldonado, a huge hole, 30, he might go, 40, midfield to the 40, and he's dragged out of bounds near the 30-yard line, or just inbound by Deion Jones. What an explosion for Maldonado. Well, I don't know if uh, it's unexpected, Walt, but he said in the last two football games, look at this, right off off tackle, and that's their bread and butter. They're going to come right at Lackawanna and say, hey, you know, we thought we should have won that football game last year, and here's the main reason. Maldonado, boy, he is just on a, on a tear right here, right through the opening of the hole, and look at the speed on him, but Lackawanna, luckily, Deion Jones has the speed to run him down on the first play from scrimmage. Sammy Maldonado puts a quick 50 in the rushing total, and the Maldonado meter going crazy in the opening seconds of this game. First and ten, and in motion is Argolino, and a pitch to Maldonado left. Maldonado hit at the line, busts through to the 20, and down to the 19, another huge gain. Let's take a look at the offensive units for the Harrison Huskies at 11-0. Michael DiBiase is the left tackle, Ivan De La Rosa on the left guard. Charles Beat is the center, Rick Lambiazzi and Ryan Callis 
Calandrucio are the tackles. Then you have Billy Heron, Justin Williams, and Chris DeFeo. And in the backfield, Maraglino and Sammy Maldonado. Paul Servideo is the quarterback. Great unit. They love to run the football, Mark Allen. They got to a great start here early in this football game and really had Lackawanna back on their heels, deep in their own zone. Gain of eight from the 20. You might see a shootout here in this game. And Maldonado again. He's got the first down. He's looking for more. He cracks inside the 15, down near the 13. Plenty of yardage for the first down. And right now, Lackawanna's defense being shredded. Let's take a look at the Steelers' starting defense for this game. Mike Sweeney, Ray Arias, Lorenz Swanson in the middle, Hank Porowski, a good one, and Scott Atkins on the right side. Rashawn Lee and Dave Sintesi. Boy, he's a tough one at the linebacker spot. Dwayne Egram, Nelvin Wilder, Deion Jones, and Richard Abrams, a great secondary. A lot of speed in that Lackawanna defense. Yeah, and I'll tell you, while we touched upon it, Lee did not start. They have him in the ballgame right now, but it really cost him those first couple plays because he's a lot more physical. First down play, and the fullback will touch the football. Maraglino, his first carry. He's a big guy, too. Huge, six foot, 240 for Maraglino. And a great blocking back. They don't give him the ball a lot, but, you know, he's the reason that Maldonado's been able to run for over 7,000 yards in his career. He's a great blocking back and very unselfish. Here he gets the football and just trying to get himself two or three yards up the middle on that first down carry. Well, he gained only a yard. Remember last year, Harrison jumped out first. They scored first last year also. And led Lackawanna 6-0. Some motion in the backfield. They go to Sammy Maldonado. He busts three at the line. He's to the five. He's carrying Steelers to the end zone. And he's just shy of the end zone. Inside the one. Maybe at the one foot line. Wow. Well, there, Walt, we get a look at Sammy Maldonado. Like I said, he is as strong as a bull and quick as lightning. Boy, he just hits the hole. And he just assumed run you over, then run around you. And he just runs over a couple Lackawanna tacklers. And that was one of the big question marks this year for Lackawanna. Are they physical enough to stay with Maldonado? Here's a nice hole. They cannot afford to have that much room. And Maldonado, see right here? He'll run you right over. He hits you square in the numbers and keeps on driving. And boy, he is a powerful tailback. Dave Sintesi saved the touchdown, but here's the quarterback for video spinning towards the end zone. Touchdown! Well, that did not take long, Mark Collins. But Lackawanna has come from behind before, but a great start for that guy, Art Froilo, and his team, the Harrison Huskies. Well, I'll tell you, they just, while well, we talked to the coach last night, they just, they thought they should have won that football game last year in the championship, and you know, there was a couple, a couple plays, uh, big plays Lackawanna had, and you know, they had some big penalties and a couple turnovers, but you know, they were obviously looking to get back here this year, and both teams have, and I'll tell you right now, Harrison is in the driver's seat, physically, really, Arcara, the extra point is up and good. Set the tempo, I think, right there on that first drive, Walt. But they are just going to run at Lackawanna and say, hey, you cannot stop this train. Well, Ray Arcara, who had 45 extra points during the regular season, tacks on another one. 7 nothing. But you never do count the Lackawanna Steelers out. They've won 37 consecutive games. Let's take a look at this touchdown. Their video just you know, not a real big quarterback but there they're going to make sure that uh, there's no turnovers or anything on the snap and that's the sure way to do it just a quarterback sneak there's sammy maldonado we're going to get the maldonado meter update i mean it is clicking on all cylinders it's hard to believe he's got 75 yards on four carries i don't know it's not hard to believe like i said we we talked about in the open you were going back and forth with him <laughs> this kid he's the best back that New York has ever produced. And there is no question about it, Walt. You see in the paper, the schools that's looking to you know, have Sammy next year and have him playing for him, he's looking at Colorado, Syracuse, Florida State, Ohio State, Penn State, Arizona, Tennessee. <laughs> Not well, a bad list of schools. Now well, Harrison has proved that they can move the football, as you can see Maldonado's enormous numbers on the first drive but remember Lackawanna can move the football too yeah. and can Harrison stop the Lackawanna running game featuring yeah, four outstanding athletes I don't think it's a question whether or not Lackawanna can move the football it's a question can they stop Harrison's offense and in that first series it was not good signs they were just getting beat physically off the ball and you cannot like I said you cannot let Sammy Maldonado hit that line of scrimmage with a hole that big it's happened before to the Steelers here's the kickoff and they will kick towards, and Open that's a free ball. ball. They better pick it up. Loose ball, Harrison's got it. Oh, man, what a break. What a break. Harrison has fallen on the football, 77. Matt Dunning. Wow. 
a critical mistake by the special teams of Lackawanna, and there's Dunning. Well, you better believe it. Right now, Harrison just came out here, and they're the hungrier football team. This is a free ball. This is, you cannot let this ball bounce around. That's right there. you got to get in. That's Wilder. I mean, that is, you know, you got to get on that football. You can just see Harrison just much more aggressive. You can't let that ball bounce around. He's got plenty of time to get on top of this football. You see Deion Jones, he's going to try and pick up a block. Wilder, I don't know what he's doing. He didn't even make an attempt to get that football. Well, you know, Dunning was there, but it might have been Ivan De La Rosa, actually, 52, that fell on the ball. Number 24, the big fullback, and not too much there. Araglino, a couple of yards. Boy, what a critical mistake. Now, we talked to Bill Moore at our meeting yesterday. Lackawanna has not been down two touchdowns before, and he did not know how they would react if that would happen in this game. And you and I talked, to, we talked a lot about it. This is looking at Aguilino right there. 58 attempts for the season, 413 yards, seven touchdowns. Oh, well, you know, he is a he is a load, and boy, if he doesn't look like a football player, a linebacker and a fullback, and, and when he goes to the next level, there's no question, he could play linebacker too. He is just a load coming through there. Gain of four, second down and six from the 20-yard line. Again, motion in the backfield. Here's Sammy Maldonado. They hit him at the line and stop him right there. So Sammy Maldonado hit right at the line of scrimmage by the Steelers, Lorenz Swanson and company. And they stopped him right in his tracks. And a big play right there. Just a, a play like that can swing the momentum just enough. I mean, they got to stop. They cannot afford, like I said, to go down by two touchdowns. They have never been in that position before. This is a kid that's got to have a big game. Laurent Swanson, you see right there, Swanson, he gets good penetration, Walt. That's what Lackawanna has to do. They have to penetrate and get some contact in the backfield before Maldonado, you know, gets on away, gets on the way here. Oh, Lorenz Swanson's 239. And Maldonado there. hit hard in the backfield and stopped right there in his track. Beautiful defense by the Steelers. Lonnie Jones. Wilder in there. Oh, and Jones. I'll tell you, that's Jones, number 50. Wilder might have helped out, but number 50 takes the brunt of that one, boy. Now, this is what you got to do. You got to say, hey, Sammy, we're going to stay with you, baby. Look at this hit right there. That's Wilder and Jones. They come in there and just a nice collision. That's how you close off that off tackle hole right there. That's how you do it. Yeah, but the Steelers still have to stop them again unless they try a field goal. It's fourth down and seven. I don't see the field goal unit on, so they'll go for it. They need to get the ball biggest inside the 15 to the 14. Could be the ball. biggest play of the game right here, though. And will they pass? They don't pass often. They go right to Maldonado. He stopped. Huge defensive series by Lackawanna, and there's big Laurent Watson at 239. Laurent pumped up. Laurent, one of the leaders of this football team. You know, he started off his sophomore year. He's, here's a look at him. Maldonado, you got to go to your bread and butter. He gets tripped up by his own offensive lineman right there, but Swanson with a great play. That's a sure tackle. You And Bill Moore said, tackle this guy below the knees. Boy, he's too powerful. But what a big defensive stand right there. That's some backbone for a state defending championship team right there. And Rodney Randolph, the quarterback for Lackawanna, will lead the Steelers out in the I formation. First man through is Jones. He's dragged down after a gain of a yard, and that's it. Well, the big surprise this year for Lackawanna has been Rodney Randolph. Mark Collins, tremendous year. He's been a pleasant surprise for Coach Bill Moore, and Bill Moore said, you know, one of our question marks coming in was quarterback. You know, we lost Kowalski, a little bit of a question mark, and he said, this kid has really been a pleasant surprise. Not only the way he's played, but his leadership capabilities that he's had for this team. Well, he's not the biggest guy, but I'll tell you, they listen to him when he's in that huddle. Nine touchdowns, only four picks, plus he's rushed for 642 yards. Deion Jones gained a yard on that play. Sweeney is in motion to the right. Randolph's pass, complete to Wilder. Wilder looking to make a move. Oh, he's hit hard. Really hit hard and sent back wide. Wow, that's a destruction hit. Let's take a look at the offensive unit for Lackawanna. Dave Sintesi, Lorenz Swanson on the left side. Hank Porowski, the center. Ziegler and Ray Arias on the right side. Mike Sweeney and Angel, Angel Burgos are the two wideouts. And Melvin Wilder, along with Deion Jones and Joe West, with Randolph, the quarterback. What a hit here. Wow, this was a wicked hit. And Merrill Eagle comes in here. Well, look at this shot right here. Just helmet on helmet. Wilder actually bumps up that one, bounces off, and gets a couple extra yards. Big down right now. Third and seven. Maraglino on a big hit. Here's Joey West. Here's their man. He's looking to turn the field. He cannot reverse it. Now he does. Now he's in trouble. And hit again for a loss on the play. Margolino and company. Boy, Margolino for 240 really moves very well as a linebacker. 
It will be fourth down, and the Steelers will have to punt the football. Marilingo with a nice play right there, while what they did is they did not over-pursue. And with Joey West, you know he's a cutback runner, and that's one thing they really got to concentrate on for the Huskies today is not to over-pursue. Boy, if he cuts back, he can go the distance. And look who's back deep. Well, that's not Sammy. Sammy's not back deep. DeFeo is back deep. DeFeo back deep. Whoa. And Ray Braxton, a freshman, almost blocked. Gets it away. DeFeo with a good catch at his 49. Oh, he turns it upfield. 45, 43, and Angel Burgos down on the tackle again. Great field position for the second consecutive offensive drive. Harrison will start in Lackawanna territory. And it's all, you know, good good football teams like this, Walls, we talk about it. Turnovers and field position, and I'll tell you, turnovers, this is almost a turnover right here. Look at this snap. What a nice play, and like you said, by a freshman to go up and get it, and get the football off. And not a bad return right here. The fail shows that he's got a little speed to the outside. He actually is their fastest guy on the team, and Coach Troilo said he's about the only guy that has Lackawanna speed. I don't know. Sammy Maldonado is a 4-5 sprinter. That's pretty good speed. The 43-yard line, first down from the I formation. Fake to Maldonado. Hey, pass play. Servideo surveys the field, now takes off with it. Hit hard after a big gain, about 8 yards, to the 35-yard line. That's a very heady job there by Servideo. No one was open, so he tucked it under and took off. Yeah, he makes a nice decision on that play. He actually had a couple receivers he probably could have thrown the football to, but he elects to just pull it down, and it's a smart move right here because he sees he has a little daylight, and he picks up almost the first down. He takes a pop. That's the only thing you got to worry about as a coach because he's not that heavy. He's only 155 pounds, and he gets a nice lick out there in the open field, and he goes down. The Huskies will be in trouble. 3.48 to go in the first quarter. Gave him nine yards, second down and one. 7-0 Harrison over Lackawanna. You're watching this game live from the Carrier Dome on HDTV. And here comes Sammy Maldonado right. He's got this set up. Well, he gets the first down and Sintezzi hanging on for dear life on the tackle. Dave Sintezzi a bull at that linebacker spot. But that's how quick and strong Sammy Maldonado is. He's able to get plus yardage on that play. About six or seven. It was nice execution. They blocked this play real well. They get a little crack back on Wilder, too, and they pin him in. You look at Sintezzi's numbers, unbelievable. 140, 140 total tackles, tackles. Wow. and three sacks. Great linebacker, but look at good look here. Watch this block. There's Lee. He gets picked off on a crack back. Fullback leads the way, and Maldonado, he is just spinning and jumping. And tell you, he's a tough guy to bring down, but there's a guy that can do it right there, Sintezzi. Yeah, Lee in the game. Roderick Richardson in the game. Here's Maldonado breaking tackles. Hit hard. Boy. He's got huge yardage, a first down, and he's put down very, very hard on the tackle there by Richard Abrams, who was the MVP for Lackawanna last week against Christian Brothers Academy. And that's one thing. Look at his bleed block, though, by the fullback. Boy, he just lays someone out there, and you see right there that late hit. That's one thing with Sammy Maldonado. He will try and spin and twist and get that extra yards, and he'll leave that ball open and exposed. You give him a good shot. Last year, you know, he did fumble, and that's one thing that Lackawanna did work on this week. Well, Bill Moore's club really being put to the test right here. They might want to talk it over. Actually, it's Sammy Maldonado's club. Harrison calls the timeout. You look at those numbers right there. Last week versus Peru, while 29 carries, like I said, they like to give it to him 30 times. That's a magic number. 361 yards and five touchdowns. And right now, Lackawanna is a very frustrated football team. They've had the ball only three plays, one possession. Their defense has been on the field almost the entire first quarter. That's a good point. I, I, I was going to make that point. They, they didn't get a first down. They needed to get a first down with that first series. Give their defense a little bit of a rest. Plus, the defense really kind of swung the momentum with some of the big hits by Swanson. The offense needed to come in and do the job, and they go three in and out. And you know what's kind of funny? We always saw Joey West carry the football once in that first series. While we did talk to Coach Moore, he said, you know, Joey gets so, so pensed up with the nervous energy and we don't like to give him the football the first couple times. Well, there's your total yards. All Harrison, 111 to 2. The good thing, 111 to 2 yards, but it's only 7 nothing. So Lackawanna, only a touchdown away. Lackawanna, again, they're going to be hard-pressed to keep Harrison out of the end zone from the 16-yard line. Here's a look at Paul Fitzery. One thing Lackawanna does, they make a lot of adjustments from game to game. And they are going to play a lot of different people on defense. They'll do some liberal substituting. We already saw the big guy, David Grooms, in the game. 
Well, you, they had to substitute early here, Walt, because like I said, Harrison comes out with Maldonado and they just run him over. They run him over in the first series and you see Richardson's in, he's only a freshman, but you see he's in there, he's 5'11", 200 pounds. They gotta get some more physical players in there because that first series, they just blew the light guys water right off the line. Well, the thing with Maldonado, as you've seen him, he's almost as big as the biggest dealer defensive player. He's 220 pounds and rock solid. And Lackawanna only has a couple of players, Kurowski, Sintezzi, yeah. and Swanson, that are bigger than him. Well, they started Sweeney at the defensive end, and I, I thought coming into this season that was going to be a big question mark, and, and Bill Moore said it was because they lost Sarika and Hardy, who took physical defensive ends, and these guys are a little light. Well, they brought in Roderick Richardson, 42, and Rashawn Lee to play the corner. And here's Maldonado. Maldonado looking for the end zone! Touchdown! Sammy Maldonado looks like he will not be denied at least in this first quarter, he looks like he's not only all New York State, he looks like he's all USA. But I'll tell you one thing, Merrick Lino gets all the credit for this touchdown. You watch the block that his lead fullback lays on Porowski. He just gets underneath his pads. Watch this block. Look at Porowski in that picture there. He's going back 10 yards and on his back, and Maldonado makes it easy. It's easy for Maldonado just to follow that big guy right up the middle. He barely gets touched. And the extra point is good again. Pretty good place kicker here. Arcadia. Two for two. He's had 45 coming in for this game, so nice kicker. Rudy Arcara, that is. Two for two. Coach Paul Fitzry and the Lackawanna staff going to have to make some adjustments. Their head coach, Bill Moore, assistants Paul Fitzry, Tony Paglii, Bruce Laxel, and Kevin Paglii. Those two do the JV. Well, I'll tell you, right now, we'll see what Lackawanna's made of, Walt. I mean, they've had some... Tremendous football teams here in the past, a great record, but right now we're going to see what they're made of. Sammy Maldonado is not to be denied here in the first quarter. And I'll say, you know, like I said, he's got to be, it had to just be a burr under his saddle all summer long, knowing that they thought they should have won that football game. Like I said, he is 170 yards and three touchdowns last year. We're just getting started. This year he gets started in the first quarter. Last year didn't have a real good first half. This year he gets off to a great start. This could be a long afternoon for that one. There's Angel Burgos, 123 yards, or 112 yards, excuse me, so far from Maldonado. Sirico to kick it off. This time he kicks it very deep to Angel Burgos in the 14. Last time it was disaster. Here's Angel Burgos to the 20. Gets a block to the... 30, and he's out of bounds right before he hits the 30-yard line. So the Lackawanna Steelers, Mark Collins, are under the gun and arguably not in great position in this game, 14-0. However, there's so much time remaining, 2.27 to go in the first. That's a pretty nice return. Well, that's a nice return right there. Not bad field position. But right now, while they have to put together a drive here, they have to put together, you know, a long drive. They'd like to break one, but they need some first downs. Well, Lackawanna Steelers are not two-time defending champs for no reason at all. And they will come back at some point. Now they get the ball, and here comes Joe West. And Joe West looking for a crease out to the 37-yard line. A nice gain of six yards. The Harrison Huskies defense, they've only been on the field for four plays. Sammy Maldonado. Maraglino, Calandrucio in the middle, Fiziano, and Lambiasi. And then Beat and Heron are the two linebackers. Justin Williams, Matt Miller, Paul Servideo, and Chris DeFeo in the defensive secondary. That's a good unit. They haven't seen too many offenses, Mark, like Lackawanna. Gained almost eight yards on that game. And the Steelers looking to get back in contention in this game down 14-0, trying to move the football. and. Here's West, and West is tripped up. He did not get the first down yardage. Joe West was a carry. He's tripped up by number 20, Matt Miller. Gained only and a yard, and that was it. And a reminder that the rights to this broadcast have been granted by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, representing over 1,500 secondary schools across the state of New York, and the more than 500,000 boys and girls who participate annually in New York State Public High School Athletic Association Incorporated Sponsored Athletic competition. Any rebroadcast or republication of the programming without the written consent of New York State Public High School Athletic Association is strictly prohibited. Third down play and I don't know if he got it. Yeah, I think it, I think he's going to get a spot and get the first down. That's a crucial 
third down. Yeah, they're moving the change right now, Walt. But I'll tell you, I, I'm kind of surprised. And we did talk to Bill Moore, and I said, you know, they, they got Maldonado. He plays on the side with the big fullback, paralegal. And, and you know, you got to you gotta wonder why you gonna, he's running at him. I mean, we asked him, he said, yeah, we're, we're not going to run away from him. We will run at him. And they are. They're running at him, and they're, you know, they're getting some two or three yards here and there. But, boy, I, I think you got to run away from him, especially with the speed you have. Lackawanna's first first down. Harrison has seven. Lackawanna at their own 40. In the eye formation. Randolph to pass. Wide open is Wilder. This is set up nicely. 40. Midfield. 25. 40. Shipped out of bounds. Delvin Wilder. We'll see where they officially spot the ball. That was a beautifully designed play by the Steelers. And that's what we just talked about, Walt. Lackawanna speed is almost unstoppable. I think you really got to utilize it and really make Harrison make some major adjustments on defense. And then you can start running the ball off tackle because, like I said, Sammy Maldonado, I've been watching him. He's been moving from the left side to the right side. They're trying to use him to make the adjustments. But right here, just get to the outside. And you see Wilder, he just outruns the defensive player and picks up a big game. Well, they spot it back at the 43 where Veek pushed Wilder out of bounds. Long guy, and here's West. West hit hard as he crossed the 40 to the 39. A modest gain of four. Lackawanna running up the middle a lot in this early portion of the game. 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. All Harrison, but right now, Mark Collins, Lackawanna looking to get back into this game. Well, I talked to you about it before the game. I mean, I think it's the last team, you know, that scores the touchdown. And when you're down by two, you don't want to be playing catch-up football against a team like Harrison with a running game and with Maldonado. Difficult task. I don't think they'll get this final playoff. They won't. And that's the end of the first quarter here. We're live at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Harrison fans who traveled four and a half miles and there's a bunch of them. They are going crazy across the way because their Huskies lead the Lackawanna Steelers 14 to nothing. Quarter underway, second down and five, and Rodney Randolph squirting around the left side is pushed out of bounds. Has enough for the first down, I do believe, is Justin Williams. Number six helps him out of bounds. He did go past the marker, I had thought, so that should be a Steeler first down. The officiating crew headed by Jack Terwilliger, who is the referee. Let's take a look. Randolph, he's very, very elusive. Little play action fake with West going up the middle, and Randolph, he, he just gets around the corner, but watch this. He's just a tenacious little runner, boy. He just never goes down easy. Well, it's close enough where they have to measure for this first down. They don't have to move the sticks too far, Mark. They're right along that sideline. So well, right in. now, you know, this is uh, this is just a, a critical drive for Lackawanna. They're going to be a little, no, right by the edge of the football, they're going to get that first down. First down. But a critical drive, Walt, they need to put some points on the board. You know, it'll only be, you know, they're down by 14, but they need to get their heads back in the football game because that 14-0 lead really put them back on their heels. And I think they're in shock after that kickoff where they get on it. Now they score, you know, they like said get their heads back in the football game and start playing like they can play. Now remember, folks, this is only lack of one of second possession. And they are moving the football very nicely at this point, down 14 to nothing. They're at the 34-yard line. If they take it in here, they're right back in the ball game. Here's West. West not getting the blocking he needs. Cut down hard at the 31. Just not getting the upfront blocking so he can score through there. Joe West has been bottled up. The west wheel hasn't been turning too quick. Not like the Maldonado meter, which has gone off the charts. Maraglino is just having a big football game offensively and defensively. Here it's Heron, number 88, that gets the initial hit. But Maraglino finishes him off. Five carries, 15 yards for Joe West so far in this game. Second down and eight. Critical drive, as Mark Collins said, second, and, second down and seven. Correct, that would give him three yards. Ran up to pass, a rear pass. Long ball out there, he's, he's got, got him. West. Touchdown! Touchdown! Let him run up. Oh, baby, what a pass. <laughs> Joey West usually does it with his feet, Walt, but that was as pretty as a catch you're going to see. Over the shoulder, what concentration. 
He beats his man one-on-one, -on -one, which he's going to do every time. I don't know how you're going to play him with man-to-man -man coverage with his speed, but let's give Randolph some credit. Like I said, not only the pass, it's the leadership that he gives. The team's down 14-0. He says, come on, fellas, we're moving the football. Let's get in the end zone. He throws a touchdown pass, puts his team back in this football game. Right back in it, Rodney Randolph's 10th touchdown pass this year. Critical two-point conversion try now. Lackawanna down 14-6. The Steelers, remember, by virtue of making two out of three two-pointers last year, was actually the difference in their four-point win. Randolph, a fake, and a pass. No one's open. Now he throws, and it's incomplete. Good coverage there on Nelvin Wilder. Very good coverage. He was smothered by Matt Miller. And we talked to Coach Moore about whether or not he was going to use Joey West as a receiver. He gets him out one-on-one -on -one against the cornerback, and Randolph gets some air under it. It's a play that he can make it on the deflection, but West, like I said, what a nice look on this one. There's West right there. How can you guard him one-on-one? -on -one? There's no way, Walt, but look at that catch. That is a very difficult catch. And that's a very good sign for Joe West, too, to go to the next level and play college football to be able to run that kind of pattern and make a good catch. And Rodney just puts the ball up there and says, hey, I got man-to-man -man coverage with my best player. I'm going to put it up there and let him go get it, which he does, and puts him back in the football game. They missed the conversion, the two-point conversion, but 14-6, now it's just a turnover away. But it's a question, can they stop the offense? Because they haven't been able to up until this point. Well, Mike Zampella was the cornerback for Harrison, beating, beaten on that play for the touchdown by West. Two-point conversion, a little surprised they went to the pass again with that good running game, only three yards away. That's a big... Missed opportunity for Lackawanna. Yeah, but their major concern right now is how do they stop that inside running game? They haven't been able to. And like I said, while they, they have to get penetration with Swanson and the interior line, they got to get penetration to hit that fullback before he gets to the line of scrimmage. You never know what Lackawanna's going to do. They have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. That's a pretty good looking kick, and it comes down all the way to Zampella number two, and Zampella. Makes a nice return out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. They definitely uh, want to keep the ball away from Maldonado, that's for sure. Just like Harrison wants to keep it away from West on kickoff returns. But it's, it's Maraglino is the guy that's really causing problems. I mean, they're, they're not getting the penetration and taking him on. He is getting to the line of scrimmage and he's getting the just solid blocks on the linebackers and he's just opening it up for Maldonado. And there's a look at him right there. Here's our scoring summary. Eight plays. That was a good drive by Lackawanna. They moved the ball, moved the chain, 71 yards, take three minutes to get in. Randolph with that 31-yard touchdown pass and a pretty catch by Joey West, but they missed the two-point conversion. Who's down from the 29 for Harrison, two receivers out to the right. Maldonado cuts it up the middle. He's tripped up after a gain of about five. Nice little run there by Maldonado. Hank Kurowski, number 76, got him by the ankles and took him down. They spotted at the 35, so a gain of almost five yards, second down and five. Bill Moore, the coaching staff, they're, yeah, he's not you know... Ha not happy. Not happy with his defense. Well, let's face it. I mean, Mount one of the best runners uh, all time ever in the USA. I mean, he's only, that good. It's only when you give him that opportunity you get to that line of scrimmage and you have a nice... You know, when he has to look for a hole, it's a lot different than when the hole's wide open, Walt, because he's full speed if it's wide open. If he has to look for a hole... Second and five. Steelers need turnovers in this game to win. They stop Maldonado, and he still surges forward and gets close to the first down. What great second effort. Let's go down on the field for this report with Chris Brown. Thanks very much, Walt. The Lackawanna defense doing a lot of talking amongst themselves after those two successful Harrison scoring drives. The biggest point being made, when trying to tackle Sammy Maldonado, do not go in high. Low pad level is what's being stressed because as we all know, guys, low man wins in football. Back upstairs to you. All right, thanks, Chris. Good point. The Maldonado meter is up to 122 on 12. Man, that's, that's a great point, though. Sintezzi just tried to take him high, and he just ran Sintezzi over. This kid is too powerful. You got to stop him at the line. And the big fullback gets the ball. Maraglino. Maraglino, short gain on the play. And that's what you want to see as a defensive unit. You get the first guy to go low, wrap around, and then you just gang tag them. Both these guys, both their backs are so big and powerful. See, you got to go low. You get one guy down on the, around the legs, and then the rest of them wrap up. Cannot go high. I'll tell you, Maldonado will put his helmet and shoulder pads. If you go high on him, he'll put his shoulder pads and helmet right underneath your pads and he'll just lift you right off the ground. 
the only way, and I'll tell you, <laughs> you'll end up with a big headache for about a week if you try to tackle on him up top. Borowski and Atkins on that sack. There you Here's go. Maldonado, and Arias has got him by the ankles and tripped him up. There you go. There you go. We talked about it. And that's, the, you know, that's why they are the championship team that they are. Well, they listen to their coaches. That's a nice adjustment. And Chris just said on the sideline, the talk was go low. Look what happens when he goes low. I mean, you neutralize Maldonado. You get him by around the heels. That's it. You can tackle him. Don't go with his strengths. Don't try to, you know, tackle him up top. He wants that. He wants you to tackle him up top. That's Ray Arias. Watch Ray, 59, cut underneath. 6'2", 217, a senior. Third and five, huge play. 8.30 to go in the first half. The Harrison Huskies leading the Lackawanna Steelers 14-6. And listen to the Dome crowd. The Steeler fans on their feet. Getting loud. Through video to pass. Throw. Uh -oh. Picked up. Here goes Rashad Lee. He's 30, in. He's in for 20, a touchdown. 10, 5. Holy oh, smokes. Rashad Lee. Holy smokes. The big plays. They'll do it to you. They'll kill you. This team is unbelievable. Look at the Steelers crowd. They are going crazy. He's done that before, I think, hasn't he? I think the crowd almost ruled that play. The crowd on their feet. Boy, I'll tell you, Rush on Lee, 48 yard interception return. Like I said, he's done it before. And the people like one that are here are loving it, Walt. You remember that Brewster game, 103 yards, boy. What a big play by this young man who sat out the first couple of plays. Yeah, didn't start the first couple of plays. A little distance. I talked to Coach Moore. I said, Coach, sometimes that'll really light some fire under him. And whew, Big play right here, Mark Collins. Lackawanna down two, looking for the tie. And it just seemed like moments ago they were out of this game at 14-0. <laughs> and here comes Wilder. He's got a good shot at it. He's in. The ball game is tied at 14-14. And all that momentum that Harrison mustered is gone. <laughs> you are exactly right. This is a new football game. And that's why I said there's no, there's no, uh, you know, now there's no question of why they're the two-time state championship. This is a bad decision right here. He usually makes good decisions. His quarterback, what a, that's a real bad decision right there. Lee had him covered like a blanket. He breaks on the ball, and that is just, it's history after that. He's got great speed. You see Servideo trying to make a tackle there. Boy, I'll tell you, he doesn't want to go back to the sideline because his head coach is not going to be happy. This was a big down, third down, Walt. Lackawanna just Rose to the occasion right there, boy. <laughs> That's a familiar sight. Sideline, he has made some big plays for this football team. Now Lackawanna against Cornell three weeks ago in the quarterfinals, they saw a great passer in Brendan Hunt. Casamento last week saw a great passer in Joe Casamento, a junior out of CBA. So, I mean, there's their passing defense yeah. is prime. There's Coach Troilo on the sideline. He wants to know what happened on that play. He must, he might not have called that play, but he's talking to his coaches, boy. That, that just doesn't happen. We know Lackawanna has too much speed. You do not throw an out pattern like that unless you know, <laughs> unless you're guaranteed he's not going to pick it off. And hang on to your seats all through Western New York and Lackawanna and all through New York State. This could be a real shootout. And here comes number nine, getting away momentarily and not for too much is DeFeo. The Bayo cut down as the Steelers Sintesi had a pretty good kickoff. There's Richard Abrams on the punt coverage. And a note in this game. Here's a look first right here. Look at the You want you gotta look here at the fail. He he stops. You can't stop as when you're running back a kickoff return. He stops right here. And I'll tell you, look at Lackawanna. What a different football team they are right now. That might have done them wonders going down 14 points. They've never been down by 14. You know, it's just something happened to them, boy. And when they're down 14 now. I don't know if you're going to be able to stop them. They are just, they are revved up and ready to go. And also, last series we saw, they were tackling Maldonado a little bit lower. They might have that figured out. This Steeler crowd is really loud. They're the home team for the first time that I can remember. And they're right in uh -oh, front of them. Uh -oh. Here goes Maldonado. He might break this to distance. Midfield. And he's dragged down by Wilder at the 40. Wow, what a running back. Same play in the first series. He just breaks it. And like I said, if you do not have someone there to get some penetration, and he sees the hole, Walt, and doesn't have to think about it, look at that. A wide open hole. And boy, thank goodness Lackawanna has some speed, and that's why they have Wilder back there in the safety position, because he'll run them down. Maldonado's not going to break one all the way. But boy, that, that'll... 
turn things around a little bit. You see that hole, like I said, when he gets a good look, and you notice they line him up in the backfield almost nine yards deep. And that's deep for a tailback. But boy, he's at full speed, and if you give him that hole, he's in the secondary before you know it. He's thrown down hard by Wilder. 14 carries, 157 yards in the second quarter. Eric Lino, not much. They've been able to stop that fullback play, but they've got to hand it off to somebody just to show them something different here. Mark. You can't go to Sammy Maldonado every play. Well, you know, you, you're going to use Maldonado as a decoy, and, and a lot of times you'll pop a big one right up the middle. I'll tell you one guy, though, Sintezzi. He is not happy with himself. He has to start playing better football right here. He's a better football player. He tries going high again on the big fullback. He just cannot bring him down. He's just too big and too, too powerful. you got to go down low. And he's not happy with himself. And he's a smart kid, boy. He's going to have to make an adjustment because they need him. They need his presence in the, in the middle of the football field. You just tune this game in. It's live from the Carrier Dome. Harrison was up 14-0. Lackawanna got back 14-6 and then tied it 14-14. Here's Maldonado outside. Oh, what a cutback. He's going for the end zone. 10, 5-yard line. He's dragged down. By Rodney Randolph, I think, in there on the... But there is a late line. flag. There is a late flag here, which was dropped. This might be a personal foul on Harrison. I'll tell you, if it is, well, what... Well, that turned the game around because Maldonado was at the five-yard line when they dropped that flag. That's against Harrison. Most likely, this is a flip because it's near the 28-yard line. If we can see where the flag is, the official's going there to pick it up right now. But, man... You talk about Maldonado and his strength. What about his cutback of him? Clipping on the offense, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Well, Repeat second down. We'll get a look at it. I don't, I don't think he, you know, it's not necessary to throw a block when Maldonado's in the open field. He can do it on his own. You know, it is not necessary. You watch here. Watch his straight arm right here. You see that straight arm? Look at the strength in him. He just pushes that defender off. You're going to see here, I think that's it. Yeah, right there on Sentezi. And Sentezi plays a nice roll going down so the ref sees it. But like I said, he doesn't even have to hit Sentezi here because watch Maldonado. He's going to cut back and hit Sentezi. Sentezi wouldn't have made that tackle anyhow. So. Yeah, I think Sentezi did a good WWF yeah, that's acting sure. job. He actually he better do a better job it. on the football field. Here's Maldonado straight up the yeah. middle. They've got him hemmed in and stopped. He's down. Browski's in there. Atkins is in there. A lot of Steelers. Right on number five, Maldonado. And the thing we have to remember about this game, Mark Collins and folks, is the Lackawanna offense has only had the ball twice. So well, Harrison has not shown that they can stop the Steeler offensive unit. Yeah, but Lackawanna's come up with some big plays. You know, one was on defense. One that touched was on defense. Their offense didn't score both of them. But the defense cannot stay out here all afternoon. The Sammy Maldonado is the kind of back that gets stronger and stronger as the football game goes on. He got off to a quick start. And boy, I'll tell you, if they don't slow him down real soon, it's going to be a long day for this defense. You're going to remember this game for a long time. This might be the two best beat teams in a long, long time playing this game. They can beat a lot of other higher classes. There he fumble, and Maldonado picks it up, and Maldonado trying to get outside, and he does, and he fumbles again out of bounds. But now, after that big gainer, they might go for it on fourth down, and Maldonado is shaken up. And we talked about this while what happens when a kid of this caliber goes down. Harrison has pretty much gotten to the state playoffs on this guy's shoulders. What a great play to pick it up. You see, he takes a helmet on the knee when he goes out of bounds right here. Watch this helmet right on the knee, boy, in that area. And Maldonado goes down. And I'll tell you, for him to lay down, you know, to look at this right here, Walt. Good pop by... Lackawanna players, like I said, Maldonado will expose that ball because he tries to get that extra yard, and here he gets to the outside. And Lackawanna, they come in with a nice stick right here, right on the hip knee area. Well, we hope Sammy's all right. I mean, Lackawanna, he looks like he's okay. He's taking some water. If they win this game, they want to beat oh, yeah, you Harrison at their best, yeah, with yeah. their best back in there. But what a fortunate break, the way that ball bounced back up to Sammy. And last year, it was Lackawanna that got the breaks. This year, it's the Huskies so far. He's getting up. He's going to be, I'll tell you, let's slow him down a little bit. He's going to be back in the game. But yeah, you get. And he did pick up enough for a first down. It was a very fortunate bounce on that fumble. And he didn't lose much momentum. There's our Troilo. Boy, I'll tell you, he just, he just took his uh, heart out of his throat right there. <laughs> He's a little heart worried there. 
there is no question without this guy in the lineup, it's a totally different football game. And without him in the lineup, even for this series right now, Walt, I don't know how many plays he's going to sit out, but they're on the 22-yard line. And without Maldonado, it's a totally different offense. You know, now Lackawanna's got a good shot at at least stopping him here on first down. And even if Maldonado gets back in the game. I remember, yeah. remember our trailer was telling us at, at, at our meeting that last year they didn't play a great football game. The breaks won against them. Well, this year they get a big break on the kickoff. Now they get another big break on this fumble. No way you should pick up 14 yards when the ball's been fumbled around in your backfield. Yeah. Lackawanna got a little break because Sammy's not in the backfield here on first down. And remember, they picked him off the last time. And here's a running play. Number one, a new back into the game. Very short yarded. Rudy Arcara. Rudy Arcara, who's the place kicker, gets the ball. We didn't expect to see Arcara carry the ball that much. We don't have too much statistics on him. Miller is usually their third back in. And Rudy Arcara says, I, you know, Coach, I can run the ball besides being a place kicker. And there you see Lackawanna, that, you know, that they're getting into the backfield. But they're overrunning the play. They got great speed. Here, you know, that was a big carry right there on first down, and he picks up five yards. Gain of five. Excitement here at the dome. 4.37 to go in the half, tied at 14. Our care again. Different type of back now because without the explosiveness in there, Lackawanna is able to converge with Sintesi and stop him after a yard gain. That, 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 might, have been, that might have been an understatement, Well. <laughs> different kind of back. You're, just, you're not going to find many like Maldonado. And here okay. comes Maldonado back on the field. And I didn't, I didn't have... That's what I was talking about on that first down play. That was a big play because they picked up five yards. Now it's third and, you know, four or five yards. They would have stopped them on that first one, third and long. I mean, Maldonado's been averaging, what, over eight yards of carry. More were, than eight yards of carry. He's had a couple long ones, but... Third and four. They didn't list Arcara at all carrying the football. Stop. And a running play. They stopped Maldonado right at the line of scrimmage. Well, Maldonado oh, may be still a little woozy. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta wonder, you know, how sore he is after that hit and how it's gonna affect his running ability because he didn't look like he, you know, he got off with the explosion that he did earlier in the football game. Fourth down and Harrison will think about it. Fourth and a long four. You see Sammy taking a breath, and here you can look at it. See, he just yeah. And this play right here, and even there when he tries to get that extra yard, is not with the power and the authority he had before he got hurt. And right now, he's he's breathing pretty heavy. He plays defense, he's had some long runs, and he's been taking some shots. Big play in this game. Harrison 0 for 1 on fourth down, fourth and four. Maldonado gets hit and dropped shy of the first down yard. Rashawn Lee and he might hit him low. No, I don't think he got there. He didn't get it, but he might also got hurt a little bit more on that play. Well, he's getting up awful slow. Spot of the football looks... No, he's not going to get that first down. Well, it's all the way across the line at the other end, so it's hard to tell from this angle. They're going to measure it. Let it look at Sammy Maldonado right now. Like I said, that, that, that hurt. That one right there hurt, too. This is going to be close. I didn't think he had... The first down yard. We'll have to wait for the officials. Jack Twilliger and his crew will stretch it out. Boy, oh boy, that's got to be awful close. We can't see because that big pullback is like a and wall. And they did not there. get it. They did not get the first down. They haven't made the call yet. Wow. Look and at let's that. Let's go you down see? to Chris Brown for this special report. Hey, talk about Lackawanna veteran leadership stepping up early today. Rashawn Lee just there in on the stop to prevent them from getting the first down. Harrison, that is. Rashawn Lee also returning the interception for the touchdown earlier in this game to tie things up. It's not the first time for Rashawn Lee. Two years ago in the state championship game against Brewster, he goes 102 yards with an interception return for a touchdown. So it's been done before by this Lackawanna team. Big plays, the keys, year in and year out. Back upstairs to you guys. All right, thank, thank you, Chris. First and 10 from the 12, the Steelers. Joe West busting up the middle. Joe West keeping his balance and out to the 18-yard line. That's a nice, huge six-yard gain on first down. You want to get out of your own end. Well, I'll tell you right now, Joey West has to step up for his football team while Sammy Maldonado is not playing defense this series. You get a look right there. Harrison, nine plays, 59 yards, and 
five off the clock, but you see Maldonado is not playing defense. He's got to be hurting a little bit. He's got to be tired out a little bit. Right now, Joey West has to step up. Their best football player is off the field. Joey's got to step up and do something with this series here. Second down and three after a gain of seven by West. Here's Rodney Randolph. Quarterback keeper Rodney. Oh, he's thrown down hard at the 20. Might have gained a yard, and that's it, as he was hogtied by Justin Williams, and Williams just flipped him right over and out of bounds. Again, well, I don't know why they're not giving the football to number eight a little more often. I mean, Rodney Randolph, he's not that big, and he gets to the corner, and they just hog time and throw him down here. Like I said, this is the chance for Joey West to get in the football game. He's had a couple nice runs, but, you know, he, like we talked about in the open, if he's not as, you know, he, he's, he's not as good as Sammy Maldonado. He's awful close. Well, it's been the Sammy Maldonado show in this first half. His stats have been unbelievable. Third down and a long two. Lackawanna's probably three. They're one for two in this down. Making third downs, and they're going to get this one. So they'll be two for three. They get the first down yardage, and Joe West, he's just a little bit like Thurman Thomas. He just barrels in there. Yeah, but you see the way he got up that time? Joey says, you know, I want the football. You know, he, he got up that time like, hey, I just got you the two yards, boy. And he's a tough kid. I mean, this kid's 5'10", almost 200 pounds. Watch his run right here. This is a powerful little tailback right here. He just pushes that whole pile forward. You see him underneath there. Hey, this is the time. A minute left here in the half. Gets down low, like tunneling. You see the leg drive there, nice leg drive. First down at the 25. Here's the trickery. Here's West. He might break something like this. Out to the 34, almost. And he got an outside, he could have gone. That's the lack of one of the very scary in an offense. But again, just to get Joey into the flow of the game, Walt. I mean, he's the kind of kid, you gotta get him into the flow of the football game. If you just joined us, we're live at the Carrier Dome, HTTV Sports. Look, Look at Joe West. Nice run right here. And like I said, I mean, <laughs> this kid, he is a terrific football player. And uh, Harrison will have their hands full. Like I said, when he gets into the flow of the game, he's just getting there. He's got eight carries, 36 yards. You know, four-point average isn't bad, but you, know, he, you can just feel it. He gets into the game, he's going to break one sooner or later. And right now, boy, they, if he breaks a big run right here and they go in with a lead, well, he hasn't been a big factor on the ground. Eight for 36, a 4.5 average. But he has been a big factor because of that long touchdown pass reception. And a yeah. lot of backs can't do that at the high school level. Yeah, but I'll tell you, you know, even though he caught a touchdown pass, the kind of player he is, he's such a good halfback. You got to get him into the football game by running the football. You got to get him in there where, you know, he starts getting a little contact. He picks up some tough yards and he starts getting into the football game. That pass is something that he doesn't do a lot. And so we'll see. It looks like Sammy Maldonado is he's limping back out here, boy. He's had a, he's had a great first half, but he's also taken some physical punishment because he carries the ball pretty much every time they snap it. Now Maldonado and the Harrison Huskies. This would probably be their last shot at it. They're a predominantly senior team. They're going to lose most of their team. So this is their shot to be the New York State champs this year in 1999. But again, they have to go through the Lackawanna Steelers. Not easy. 59 seconds to go in the half. Joey Second West. down and in inches. West is lined up again one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. West has a receiver. Pass to West. High, and he missed the ball. Joey West maybe didn't concentrate. Uh, that was... That was a little too high, especially on that kind of a pattern right there. While you don't have time to go up in the air and catch it and come down, you want a nice bullet pass because it's you get the ball out there quick and then it's one on one with the defensive cornerback. And like I said, I don't, I don't believe they're not giving this guy some help out there. But see Rodney, he just doesn't get a tight spiral. Joey's got to go up in the air and try and make the catch. And it looks like we have a timeout. Lackawanna called. If you just join us, we're live from the Carrier Dome. Walter John Sears along with Mark Collins and Chris Brown on the sidelines, our entire HGTV crew. It was a shock. Harrison scored first. That wasn't the shock. 7-0. But then they got a break on a kickoff. Didn't convert. Then they scored again. Harrison led 14-0. That was a shocker, Mark. Lackawanna got back in it on a touchdown pass, of all things, to Joey West. And then a long touchdown return on an interception by Rashawn Lee to tie the game. Well, those are, you know, one of the keys for Harrison was, you know, shut down the big plays. And so far, the, the, it's been the two big plays that got Lackawanna back into this football game. But, you know, right now, you got to like, you know, Lackawanna's chances where they're sitting right now while it's 14-0 and they're going into halftime. And, and that's the best, you know, that's probably the best you're going to see out of Harrison all day long as far as their offense. I mean, Maldonado, 
they were just unstoppable right there. And the Lackawanna made some nice adjustments, and now, like I said, they've got the football with 50 seconds to go. And if they can somehow or another put some points on the board here, boy, the Huskies go in at halftime saying, what in the world happened? <laughs> Third and inches, and Lackawanna runs a lot of gadget plays on offense. They're always up for some trickery. This time the quarterback keeps it, Randolph, and he has the first down, and then he's thrown back. So it will be a first down. Clock will stop with 51 seconds to go while they reset the chains. And the officials say first down. I'll tell you right now, the Lackawanna wants to be careful with this football. You know, you don't want to turn it over. Lackawanna takes their final timeout. Now the question mark going to the second half, if all things hold true, would be the help of Maldonado. Is he 100%? I, I don't think he is. I mean, that's a tough... Usually when you catch one on the, you know, on the hip, you get that little hip pointer or whatever, and you can see, he's just, you know, checking his knee right now. I mean, he's been pretty bruised up here in the first half, but, you know, he'll get some rest at halftime and come out. But, well, it's just because he runs the football so many times, you know. He runs it 30 times and he plays defense. I mean, and not only that, when he runs the ball, he hits people, you know, physically. He takes a lot of punishment just because he likes to hit people. I mean, he'll run you over. Yeah, he's a big time back. Definitely going to be a Division I back, barring injuries or anything else on foreseen. He should be a good one. I mean, you're looking at the best back statistic wise ever in New York State. So yeah. that's quite a pleasure. And he comes from the B classification. So it just shows you you don't have to come from the biggest of schools. No, and a kid of this caliber right here, these are the kind of guys that go and play as true freshmen when they get to college. At the half, uh, we are going to go around Section 6, all the news, notes, and highlights from around Western New York. And remember the top 10 players of the week. So that will be at the half around Section 6. First down from the 36 now. Wouldn't be surprised if Lackawanna tries to throw a long ball in this situation. They're in the shotgun, so they're going to pass. And Burgos running the deep route. Randolph looks the other way, throws, it's caught by Wilder. Uh -oh. He's at the 50, uh -oh. he's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20, he's down inside the 10 yard line, 37 seconds to go, plenty of time, the clock stopped, 36 seconds to go, an injured Husky on the field. We just talked about it, Walt, if there's any way they can put some points on the board and it doesn't take them more than 50 seconds to go to the length of the field, and Wilder, boy, he just, a nice little crossing pattern. What a great play by Randolph just to keep his poise and hang in there and hits him on a little crossing pattern. Boy, he streaks up the sideline, and I'll tell you, they're knocking on the door. And like I said, Harrison is just going to be scratching their head if they win at halftime down to this football team. Well, we told you our third key was the Wild Wild West Show, but we wanted to actually make it the Wild Wilder West <laughs> Show because Wilder yeah. every game is becoming more and more important to the Steelers offense and, and I you know I, I wrote up with you near Syracuse and you know you know the Lackawanna team better than anyone and you know you tell me some things and, and yeah you make some real sense boy Lackawanna has got so many weapons it's just incredible I mean they have so many weapons you see Lee picks it off and goes for a touchdown you see Wilder he catches one almost runs for a touchdown they got five or six guys in the team that can every play there's a chance <laughs> for a long touchdown I mean, it's incredible. You never see that in a high school football where they have that, you know, a, a team that's that explosive. That's number six, Justin Williams down. The Steelers up to the line of scrimmage. First and goal from the nine. Well, Lackawanna truly, as Harrison is going to burn a timeout, truly a gifted football team, very well coached. Said very well coached. And, you know, they got over the injury last year at Turner. When, when, when Turner was hurt, he took that late hit, took that late hit, really kept them out of the game for a good quarter, and took Lackawanna's best back out of the game. But they made up for it. You see it right you watch here, this Walt. Late this hit. Is, and that was a late hit. It was Eric Lino. And then watch Joey West picks up the slack for Turner, and this could be the difference between Lackawanna and Harrison. They have the depth. And if... Uh, <laughs> If something happens to the main guy here, well, you're right. Maldonado, Maldonado, they could be in a lot of trouble. You're right. Well, we already saw when Maldonado went out, the other back came in, and we didn't even, you know, expect him to even play as a halfback. So they have to bring someone off the bench and get a look right there. Their current drive, seven plays, 77 yards, and two minutes, 24 seconds. And, you know, like I said, Joey West did get involved a little bit. He ran the ball, had some nice runs. And, and then, see, you get him in, you get him involved, they got to start watching Joey West keying on him. And then Wilder and the rest of the guys, you know, they... they they start running free and running wide open and 
they still got to get in the end zone. First and 10. Ball just outside the 10 yard line. 36 seconds to go. Let's see if they give it to Wilder, who has been hot. Wilder's got the ball, and they've got Wilder after a gain of only two or three. Now, they can't stop the clock, so the clock continues to run. 29 seconds to go. I don't know why the clock was stopped. There's an injury. There's a, Har there's a Harrison player injured on the field. That's a break for Lackawanna. 88, Heron. It's getting up very slowly. Otherwise, this clock would keep running. I tell you, the, the forces are being depleted on the Harrison defensive side of the ball. Lackawanna is a ferocious, tough, hard-hitting football Well, team. I'll tell you, this guy right here, Walt, see, we're, we're talking field goal here. Uh, you know, if you don't get in the end zone, Lackawanna obviously like to get a touchdown here, but you know, I think they got to take a field goal if it gets the clock ticks down. Randolph spikes the ball, which is surprising with 24 seconds to go. That's they okay. They're going to take plenty of time to pick out a play there. They're going to take one more shot at the end zone, and I believe they kick a field goal if they don't get in the end zone on this play, unless they get real close to the goal line. Now there's John Wright, the field goal kicker, 46. They don't try too many. He's a pretty adept kicker. He could probably reach it from well, the distance where they're at right now. Let's see what they call. I'll tell you, one guy we haven't called his number is Deion Jones. You know, he's he's always a nice little option when they get down here close to the end zone. They like to throw the football to him. Let's see what happens here. Wright's range might be up to 30, 35 yards. One man in the backfield. Westwood are going to pass. Randolph puts a huge pressure. Randolph throws on the run. It's picked off. Picked off by Heron. An ill-advised pass. And the half looks like it's going to end up in a tie. So a rare mistake for Rodney Randolph. And a huge mistake because no shot at the field goal wall. One thing you don't want to do is turn the football over when you had the opportunity to at least get a shot at some points. And I'll tell you, that coach right there is happy that his defense shut him down and didn't let him get any points. Well, I was really surprised. Let's take a look at the replay. Here's a look right here. He's got a lot of pressure right there. And he rolls, but he just throws this one in the... There's no one even there. He doesn't even have a receiver there. There's three white shirts. Not a Lackawanna receiver even in the picture. And that's that's right there. That's a tough... That's how it goes, Mark. But I'm very surprised on second down why they spiked the ball. They had plenty of time for Coach Moore and his staff to signal in a play like they do and run a run on second down and then have another crack at it at third down and maybe even fourth down. Yeah. I think but you, that didn't happen. Well, I'll tell you, they got to be happy anyhow. Lackawanna going into the locker room right now. 14 apiece. Danny Maldonado a little banged up. A couple other guys banged up on Harrison's team. And I'll tell you, you look at the Coach Troilo right there. He's saying, holy cow, you know, I thought we had this one all wrapped up in the first first quarter we ran all over him and you know this Lackawanna team is just unbelievable he's yeah. gonna go in the locker room and say hey what I tell you about these guys they are just you know they're so fast I mean you can't blink your eye and they're gonna be in the end zone now there's no quit in Lackawanna certainly they've won in their 37 game streak an incredible 14 consecutive playoff games so they've beaten great teams they've beaten Maine and well they've beaten Harrison uh, they've beaten Brewster they've won big games they've beaten Hornell three times in the last three years they've met every challenge and they always find something something new a way to win a football game a pass for instance in this game yeah well, I'll tell you this one's going to come down to the second half I mean that was a good first half These are two good football teams little adjustments on both sides Lackawanna's going to have to make some adjustments on the defensive side of the ball start tackling lower Harrison at the same time they're going to have to make some adjustments you know we'll see what happens with Maldonado but I'll tell you, I think Joey West could be the difference here in the second half. Well, if they just started getting him into the football game, he's really got to come out and assert himself in the second half. All right, let's go down to Chris Brown with head coach Bill Moore. Here with Lackawanna head coach Bill Moore. And coach, I know you're disappointed you didn't come away with any points there at the end of the half, but you finished the half pretty strongly. You're right back in this game after a bit of a slow start. Well, I thought we had a little bit of jitters in the beginning, which I really didn't anticipate because we've been here before. But we've overcome that. We still have to ta block and tackle. Whichever team's going to block and tackle the second half is going to win the game. Speaking of tackling, I heard a lot of the defensive players talking about getting low on Maldonado. They were going in high at him there early on. Yes, that's we practiced that all week. I guess we got to do a little more practicing. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. That's Coach Bill Moore. Back upstairs to you, Walt and Moore. Well, thanks, and there's Bill Moore's comments. It's surprising that Lackawanna has been here three straight years that they would have the jitters. But, of course, not all of these players have been here. Yeah, well, you're right, Walt. I think, you know, a lot of seniors graduated last year, and these guys, a lot of them hadn't played. And, you know, this is still a big game. I mean, if you've been here or not, this is still a big game. They're at the Dome. It's for the state championship. I had a little jitters today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Lackawanna can find a, a lot of ways to beat you. They use an interception and a pass to Joe West. 
And remember, round section six coming up at the half. The score, the Harrison Huskies, 14, and the Lackawanna Steelers, 14. Well, the halftime score, 14-14. Uh, Walter John Sears along with Mark Collins right up here in the booth. We're live at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, and certainly, Mark, was a very entertaining uh, half. Harrison uh, shocked the Lackawanna people. Two quick scores. Lackawanna comes back, makes a game out of it. Let's take a look at the stats in the first half and see what developed. It was an unusual first half. We take a look at the first half right there. Passing yards for Harrison, zero. They don't throw it much with Maldon on the backfield. Lackawanna, 103. And a big bat class pass play right at the end of Wilder was a lot of that, Walton. The rushing yardage, though, that's unbelievable. 218 yards, that's all. Sammy Maldonado, Lackawanna, only 48 yards in the first half. Total yardage right there, though, lopsided 218 to 151. First downs, 10 to 7. The turnovers, though, the one crucial one, Lackawanna in the kickoff. That turnover really hurt them. Well, I remember a good point here, Mark Collins. So Lackawanna Steelers, by committee average, 324 yards on the ground in each game. And this game, it hasn't happened. Maybe it will happen in the second half. Mel Donato, great first half. Oh, unbelievable first half. Got off to a real quick start. 19 carries, 190 yards, and one touchdown. And he got slowed down with that little hip pointer there. He might have got another TD. And Joey West, only eight carries, 36 yards. I think they have to get him more involved in the second half. Well, I don't know why they didn't give him the football when they were first and goal at the 10-yard line just before half because he's, a, he's the senior. He can really, you know, he's the guy they really have to look to this half to, you know, establish some ground game. He's a great tailback, and you know, like I said, I look forward to seeing him this half. This is going to be a good second half. <laughs> Well, Sammy Maldonado is going to kick it off. The other thing, besides West only getting eight carries for 36 yards, let's not forget, Wilder's carried only once for a yard, and Jones once for a yard. And they have been very instrumental in the last few Lackawanna wins. Uh, Randolph had completed four out of seven with a pick and a touchdown. Servidio was 0 for 1 with the pick. Never want to kick deep to Lackawanna, and West has got it at the 8. Up to the 10. They hem him in, however, at the 21. That's very, very good coverage. Number 88, Billy Heron, along with Matt Dunning. I'll tell you, one of the mistakes right there, though, Walt, you want to catch the football in the air on a kickoff. If you can catch it in the air, because the timing's there. You see Joey West here? He lets the football bounce, and then you have trouble picking it up on the bounce and also the timing for your blockers. They're trying to throw their blocks with the timing that when you catch the football, you're gonna be there by the time they're throwing their blocks, and that's what happens. The defenders have a time to get to Joy West and Hemel in. I think you're right. Sintezi, Swanson, Borowski, Ziegler, Arias, the front line, Burgos and Sweeney, the receivers. Randolph with Jones and Wilder and West in the backfield. Wilder in motion, pitch to West going right, looking for a block. Jones gives him a block. West gets outside and then is dragged down after a gain of five. That was some very good defense there by Harrison because it looked like West might be able to take it outside and DeFeo made the stop. Yeah, they stretched that out nice, Walt, but right off the bat, get Joey West involved in the offense, which they do. And like you said, we didn't see a lot of that in the first half. We didn't, you know, you didn't see that pitch play to Joey West. He's going to pick up three, four yards almost every time he carries the football just because he's so explosive to the corner. Bill Moore and his staff has had a lot of imagination in the playoffs. As you can see, Harrison's had the ball twice as long as Lackawanna. That's one of the reasons why West and Jones and Wilder haven't had the touches. They haven't had the football. Second down and five. And here comes West. There he goes. 30, 40. Fumbles the football. Harrison's got it. Heron has fallen on the ball. Billy Heron comes up with the Joe West fumble. And West is down. And apparently hurt. Joe West still down on the ground. I don't, Probably it, his pride. It's definitely his pride, Walt. Last week. Look at this here. In the open field, you got to watch out. Someone coming up from behind. And Joey West dropped the football four times last week. And that's, you know, you just can't drop the football. And right here, 
when he gets to the open field. This is a nice run. They finally get him into the offense here, but he's holding it too loose right here. See, he's got it out there way too loose. You've got to tuck that ball in until you're guaranteed that there's no one coming from behind. And I'll tell you, that was a real costly turnover here early in the second half. Matt Miller made the hit. And you saw the recovery by Heron. Maldonado hit after a short game, a game of maybe three, four as he surges forward. David Grooms is in on the defense. Big number 78 in on the tackle. He's one of the players for Lackawanna. He's by far the biggest stealer at 291. The offense for Harrison, DiBiase and Della Russo are the left side tackle and guard. Beat the center, Lambiase and Calandrucio on the right side. Heron and Williams, along with DeFeo, are the wideouts. Servidio, the quarterback. Maraglino and Maldonado in the backfield. Well, important series for both clubs. Just underway, 10-20 to go. Third quarter, second and seven from the Steeler 37. Maldonado, he's got a crease. There he goes, 25, down to the 21. Wow, he is so quick. Got to be over 200 yards now, and that's a first down. He just runs this play so well, Walt. I mean, you can tell he's done it quite a few times in his career, but, you know, and these are tough yards inside the tackle, and he just knows how to pick out that little hole, and you just give him a little crease, and he is through it. And once he's through it, boy, he is tough to tackle. But you see the big fullback again. They are just cleaning house. That Sentezi in the middle. you got to get in that hole a lot quicker. You can't wait for that fullback to hit you. you got to stuff that hole and make Simon Maldonado take a different route. Now the Steelers have been hurt with three turnovers. If you count that kickoff as a turnover, fumble, and Lackawanna has the ball. The Steelers' Jones has popped on it quickly, Sentezi. and Sentezi has it in his hand. There you go. There's the kid that's got to step up. And like I said, this kid's a good football player. I don't want to make it sound like I ain't getting down him on the first half, but I've seen him play, and he can play a lot better than that. And that time, he steps up in the hole. They get to Maldonado earlier this time and shut it down, and he coughs the football up. Now, Sammy Maldonado has had trouble hanging on to it the last two years, too, Walt. There, boy, he just drops that football. Doesn't get a good handle on the exchange from his quarterback. I thought Jones was going to get it there 50. Jones had a good game. He's had a good game. Sintezi, like an octopus. He had more than two arms on that one. He was all over that ball. Big turnover back to Lackawanna. Both clubs turn it over. Here's West. West with that great speed. 30. They've done a good job on Joe West. He's out to the 32, but... The Harrison Huskies defense has done a real nice job on him. Yeah, but, you know, a nice job. But like I said, while here in the second half, they're getting Joey involved. I mean, it's just it's only one play it takes for him. And he's been close. And really early here in the second half, he's been close. The one he fumbled on, he almost broke. And you see his style, though. He likes to carry that ball. Watch this. He, he likes to carry the ball a little loose right here because, he, you know, he just keeps it away from his body because he likes to do that shake and bake. You see there, though, he's got it sticking out there again. you got to tuck that in. That was in on the tackle, and then Heron... And Servideo came in second. Eight of nine. Second down and one. Right up the middle. Joey West. He's got the first down. He breaks tackles. Joey West to midfield. Joey West. He's running like he's 220. And he's 179. Hey, let me tell you. This is a kid that, you know, he ran for almost 2,000 yards this year. While 21 touchdowns. And like you said, ever since his sophomore year, he's been just a, a terrific halfback. Look at this run right here. Watch the power right there. He just runs over the video and says get out of my way and there's how you hold on to the football like I said get Joey involved he's a senior season he wants it now they might have a little fire under Joe West up to 82 yards on 12 carries the West wheel starting to spin faster from the 49 yard line of the Harrison Huskies Lackawanna trying to take the lead a long way to go here's Randolph not much there he's pushed out of bounds number 20 Miller's been playing a good defensive game there Matt Miller I'll tell you, I'm surprised they're running Randolph as much as they have here, Walt. They have Wilder in the backfield. Jones hasn't even touched the football, and he's a good back. But, you know, they're using, trying to use Joey as the decoy again. But like I said, Randolph, he's been getting to the outside, but he's definitely not the, the back that Wilder and Jones are. And like I said, but getting Joey involved now, it's starting to loosen up that defense, you know, with Harrison. And now, you know, now things open up a little bit for the offense for Lackawanna. Gain of two, second down and eight. Lackawanna Steelers going from the I formation. 8.20 to go in the third quarter. We're live at the Dome. Here's West. West can't break tackles. He just barrels ahead, gets what he can, puts his head down, and goes to the 45-yard line. 
Clock running with 8.08 to go in the third quarter of 14-14 game. Talking to that guy, Art Troilo, at our meeting, he said these two teams in the B class could, could beat teams probably in higher classes. This might be one of the best B games of all time. Yeah, they played teams that are in the higher class, like Brewster. They used to be class B. They're up class A now. And, you know, he, he said, you know, with these with these offenses, with the explosive offense they have, both teams, well, they can stay with anyone. Any kind of what classification. It would be hard-pressed to see two teams this good again in a B final with this kind of talent. And timeout call by Lackawanna. Randolph looked up. He saw something. I think the play clock was down to four seconds. Rodney didn't feel he could get that playoff in time, so he burnt a timeout. And I talked a little bit about Rodney Randolph's leadership, and, you know, that was Joe West that he was calling over to the carpet and said, hey, Joe, you know, come on, fella. we got to keep an eye on what's going on here and keep focused. Well, I think Rodney Randolph, out of all the Steelers, has had the most remarkable year when you consider all the pressure that must have been on him, everyone saying he's too short like a Flutie situation, and coming in to lead a team that had won back-to-back -back state titles and being an unproven quarterback. And he's really proved everyone wrong and had a great season. I mean, he's played quarterback as probably as well as any quarterback in Western New York. He's led the Steelers. He's done what he's had to do on offense, and he's made some very big plays for them. He's thrown 10 touchdowns and only five interceptions. Well, and I think you can see that, you know, Coach Moore has all the confidence in the world in him. I say, he's going to let him run the football quite a few times today. But that wasn't the case going into the season. There was a big question mark about Randolph and how he would do, and big he's play. done just fine. Big, big play right here, Walt. Third down and seven in the 45. In motion is wild or left. They give it to West, straight up the middle. There he's he goes. Got the first down, 35, 30, 25, 20, 10. He's got a touchdown! Joe West! Well, well, West! You think I better go down on the sidelines or what? i tell you one thing. There's the guy you got to get involved right there. You won't see a better back than this guy right here. We talked about Sammy Maldonado. There's no question. He has the statistics to show it. But Joey West, pound for pound, Walt, play for play, there's no one better. Because <laughs> he gets in the end zone in such a hurry. Oh, boy, you see the coach time the time. What do you do with a guy like that? Now, I'll tell you, though, let's get some credit. Offensive line and Deion Jones had a crushing block to spring Joey West. Big decision here by Coach Bill Moore and his staff. They can go for one. They elect to go for two. John Wright would try the extra point. This is huge. This would give Lackawanna an eight-point lead or keep it at six. Randolph, the reverse, Burgos. Oh, he could have threw it at a man wide open. Now he throws it away. He had Deion Jones wide open in the corner, and that is a huge play. It just took too long to develop, Walt. They come, on the re they come on the reverse. He is wide open, but it takes a little too long to develop. He could have ran that or thrown to Jones, yeah. but he waited too long. But still, they get a touchdown out of it, and that's a big, that was a big play. Like I said, third down. Well, we get a look at that, boy. Watch the offensive line. Look at Deion Jones right there. You see that? That's Deion Jones that puts some video on his back and gets Joey West to the outside. And once he gets the outside, I don't care who you are, you're not going to catch this guy. <laughs> He's so smooth. Look at this look right here. There. Oh, boy. Head on, boy. Jones just levels Sir video, who's not that big, boy, but he just takes a just a terrific angle. Watch this block. Him and Wilder, both of them. And Joey West. Oh, boy, is that... That's an explosive offensive team. However, they went for two. They went for the trick play. It didn't work. So they're stuck at 20. They've been one for three on their two-point conversions. Now in that situation, Mark, like do like you the, try for I one? Like, I don't like the trick plays down there. I mean, that's too close to the end zone when you got this guy right there. You know, one play before that, he goes 50 yards like that, and he's a powerful back. I think you give Joey West a pitch and let him try, you know, to get to the corner and see if anyone can catch him. You know, I think it's your best bet. Sintezzi's kickoff. Well, Jones was wide open. Burgos just did not get him a ball at the 28-yard line, picked up by the up man, and too good a field position up to the 38-yard line. Late flag. That's going to be an out. They're going to be a personal foul for hitting him out of bounds, I think. Salvo took it back. There you see number three. And if it's a penalty on Lackawanna, that's going to tack on more yardage. This is anyone's game, I'll tell you that right now. This game might go right down Unless to the last Unless they're going to give it to the... I tell you, the Harrison coach was yelling at one of his players, and that was... 
Well, Sir Video says it's against Lackawanna. The referee there, Jack Williger, talking with his... Lackawanna got a little over enthusiastic on the tackle. But the adrenaline is definitely pumping right now. Well, it was a poor kickoff. Personal off. foul on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Lackawanna crowd doesn't like it. It was a poor kickoff to start by Sintesi. Salvo did a good job on the return, and then the personal foul. You look at the Lackawanna scoring. Five plays, 76 yards. That was a good series right for him. Two minutes off the clock. Joey West, 45 yards down the sideline, thanks to his two teammates. And a great block to spring him. And uh, like you said, Rock, though, the crucial thing was the two-point conversion failed. Did not work. From the 46-yard line, Lackawanna now up 20-14, to 14, their first lead from Lackawanna's 46. Here's Maldonado. He just squirts ahead and dives to the 42. He can get yards in so many different ways. But you know, how big of a penalty was that? Well, he said, not a great kick, the personal foul. It gives him the field position. You cannot let Sammy Maldonado only have to run 50 yards. You can't get, you know, can't shorten the field up that much for him. You, know, lack, you make him work. I mean, you know, make him work. Maldonado with 213 yards on 24 carries. Wow. And what is the West Wheel up to now? He spun it around. There's a running play again in Maldonado. They're doing a better job on him now. He's what, dragged down by Sintesi. They're doing, they're really, they're just going low. You see Lee there, and Lee's a big hitter. You know, and Lee is a real big hitter, but for him to go low on Maldonado, you know, it's got, it's got to be tough when you're a big hitter to have to go low. You want to take him high, you know, because that's where you get the collision. But watch how low he goes, and this is how you tackle a kid like Maldonado. Look at Lee right there. See, right around the ankles. Because Sammy's all up top, boy. He wants you to come up top, and he, you go low on him, you trip him up, and he loses his balance, and he's not going to break it. And then Sintesi hit him second, third, and two. Joe West, by the way, his wheel's up to 130 yards, 14 carries. Big play, third and two from the 38-yard line. Uh-oh. Maldonado's got the first down, and then he's dragged down again by Lee at the 35. A good effort again by Lee. Maldonado running hard right now. But again, right there, that offensive line does a nice job. They open that hole up for him, and see the line, and his big fullback takes on Richardson, and once he gets through, but Lee, that's the way you tackle him. That's two in a row for Lee, and now he's got it down. He knows he, he knows how to do it now, and he's probably telling the rest of his teammates, look, it, just go low on this guy. This might be one of those games that go down for the he's last had, couple of minutes. He's had a terrific football game right there. He's made some big plays. I mean, even though he had that touchdown, intercepted for a touchdown, these last two tackles have been good. That's Rashawn Lee, number 12, who's had the big game. And Rashan is 196 pounds. Here's Maldonado. He's hit, breaks tackles. Swanson's got him down after a gain of about almost five. There's Atkins. They hit him right at the line of scrimmage, but he's so big and strong, it's hard to stop him. But you know, they're doing it, they're doing a better job though, Walt. They're getting a, a lot more people in the football. He said they're going lower. You're not gonna tackle him one on one, but I sense that he slowed down a little bit here in the second half. I don't know if the injuries caused it a little bit, but Lackawanna is getting to, you know, getting a few more guys to the football. And, and Sandy seems to have lost a step a little bit here in the second half. Well, Lackawanna, besides being a quick and fast defense, they're a hard-hitting, ferocious-type defense. They will really hit you and keep hitting you the entire game. They put a lot of backs out. Maldonado, he gets outside. Now he cuts it inside. Nice-looking cut. Now he goes inside the 20, near the 15. What a run that was. He's got great vision. Like I said, he's lost a step, but even losing a step, he is still incredible. He cuts around that corner. They got to, I'll tell you, they have a shot at him right here, though. I don't know who it is. It might be, who is that, right on the corner there. See, you over-pursue on him, he'll cut back on you. Wilder must have. Jones comes back to make the tackle. Here's a look at it right here. This is a nice cut. See that? He just cuts it back. That's Jones. You can't over-pursue on him. You got to take the proper angle on him and, and tackle him low. First and 10, and the 16 for the Huskies. Good rush by Lackawanna here. They run the play outside, and Lackawanna smelled it out pretty well, and they held Matt Miller. I think that's Matt Miller's first carry of this game. Matt Miller's first carry of this game. I'll tell you, that, that was the first time I, I've seen that. That was almost like a, they called a blitz on that, and Porowski is in the backfield wall. And I think, you know, they got to take a gamble once in a while and do that again because that worked. Look at Porowski. He's right there. He's around the quarterback, and they should have stopped this play dead. They shouldn't have let He picked up 
three or four yards. That's Jones again. You got to break down. You got to get a breakdown in your stance and make that tackle because they had that one, like you said, smelled out. That should have been a loss. Yeah, the Steelers have missed a few tackles, but that's high school football. Second down and eight. Blitz is on. They give it to Maldonado. He squirts through, and Maldonado Bamba. fumbles, and Lackawanna's got the ball again. The Steelers get a big break. Huge. That's, I'll tell you, that's not a, that's not a break right there. And there's Lee again. What we just talked about, what a big game. But the credit goes to the guy who gets the big stick. And I believe that was number 19. I think that was Ingram that just sticks Maldonado right in the back and makes him cough that football up. And Sammy Maldonado, we talked about, well, he's always trying to get that extra yard, and the coach talked about it, too. He's prone to fumble the football. See, he's trying to get that extra yard, and that was a hit. That was Ingram, number 19. Sticks him good on the back, and it pops out. Watch this right here. Sammy trying to twist for that end zone, and boom. Oh, man, he lays one on him. And Ingram, not a big guy, and Rashawn Lee comes up with the football. Now Lackawanna will start from deep in their own zone from the seven, and Lee is thrown down. Right, or Joe uh, West, excuse me, Joe West is thrown down right at the line of scrimmage, no game. Now the Steelers need to move out of their own zone. There's Veet, tough player there, number 54. That was a good play right there by Veet. He reads it and just slips in the hole there and catches Joey West in the backfield. Gets good penetration. The offensive line missed him. He was coming through, and you know they're going to start keying on Joey because right now, you know, West is involved in the offense, and they're going to have his number. Two big fumbles by Sam Maldonado from the I formation. Randolph, deep in their own territory from the six yard line. Second man through, not too much here again. Joe West, West out to the 10 yard line. Well, Lackawanna needing to make a first down. This is gonna be a real tough ball game. The team that's not gonna win this game, it's gonna be a tough one to take. But it's surprising though, a lot of turnovers today. And, you know, it's hurt both teams, and right now, you know, you're starting to mount on the Harrison sideline. I know Coach Troilo can not be too happy, even with his star football player. Listen to the Harrison fans on the other side of the field. They have a big contingent. Four and a half hour drive here from Harrison, which is in Westchester County, to get to Syracuse for this game. Pass too high, Wilder catches it, makes a good move, and then he swarmed under. A loss on the play, again. Randolph's pass was high, and that allowed the coverage to get there. Randolph, he, he's not throwing that football with authority, Walt. He's floating it out there. And that's, like I said, that's that same pass that he threw over top of Joey West. That is set up nice. If he gets that ball over to Wilder in a hurry, see, he's just trying to baby that thing. you got to zip it over there, boy. He zips it over there. Wilder's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. But, you know, he floats it up there, and the, the defense just reacts to him. And now I'll tell you, this is going to be... This is a big play right here to see if they can get a decent cut out of it. Nope. this situation. First they got to get it off, and that's a freshman punting, Ray Braxton. They've had trouble with their punting game. Almost blocked. Hey, a good kick. Up to the 40. DeFeo at the 40. At the 30, he's a little get back, man. He took that back and hurt. It's a great field position for the Harrison Huskies again. It seemed like they've had the ball in Lackawanna ter territory most of this game. Well, it's definitely coming down to field position. There's the fail, and I tell you, this guy can fly, and he had a chance to get to the corner because uh, Lackawanna had to really sit there and make sure they didn't get a block on that. When you see the fail, there's no one even in the screen because everyone's sitting back making sure that they get the punt off, and they really didn't have the punt coverage team coming down early. That's a huge return of about 20 yards for DeFeo. Getting it to the Lackawanna 22-yard line. I thought Ray Braxton did a good job just getting that punt out of there. Remember, he's a freshman. Here's your time, 1.21 to go in the third, 20 to 14. Here's Maldonado right. Maldonado breaking the tackle and squeezing some yardage out near the 17. When he squeezes yards out, it's like five and six at a time. He well, is. one of the things, yeah, one of the things with Maldonado, he's definitely a workhorse, no question. Here's the pitch play. Get the big guy out in front of him once again. He gets a block, and Lee and Sintesi just kind of shut it down right there, but he picks up the yardage. But one thing about Maldonado now, Walt, he's got to, you know, mentally, when you fumble the football a couple times, you know, you start thinking about it, and it takes you off your game a little bit. Second and four. We've tried to pass only one time in this game, Sir Video. And here's Maldonado. He's cut down right at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle by Kurowski. 
Grouski got him by the ankles. And he might be hurt again, Walt. I'll tell you the way he tackled him, he got him right by the ankles, and Sammy Maldonado came down in an awkward position when he landed on this one. Look at that's how you go low. I mean, look how low Grouski gets on this one. Look how low he is. He's right on the turf, you see? He came down in an awkward position. We get a look at it right here. Watch this. Borowski comes through. Now watch. He's kind of sideways. See how he oh, see how he turned the ankle right there? I'll tell you one thing. And he dropped the football after that because I'm sure he was in a lot of pain. And that's the end of the third quarter. Through all that commotion, the clock ran out. Lackawanna had the only points in that third quarter, a West touchdown, but the outcome is in doubt. Will it be Harrison getting their first state championship, or will Lackawanna win for the third straight year. It's Lackawanna 20 and Harrison 14. A Cablevision Millennium Minute. Spotlight on. Here's along with Mark Collins, our entire crew, Chris Brown on the sidelines. What a game. 20 to 14, Lackawanna leading by six. They were down 14 nothing, Mark. They ran off 20 straight points, but now the Huskies looking to at least Hyatt maybe take the lead. This one's going to go down to the wire. <laughs> feeling too well. Last you did, this one's going to. Third and one, and Maldonado's got the first down. He's got the five-yard line. Sammy Maldonado, he's hurt. He's banged up. He's up to 260 yards play, rushing. Ted, there's a player down for Lackawanna. Melvin Wilder, he gets up a little slow. And but Ray Arias is going to come in for a while. Here's a look at the replay right here. He just knocks his offensive lineman out of the way. I'll tell you, is he determined to get in the end zone or what? Well, he wants to make up for that fumble. That's a nice tackle right there, though, to keep him out of the end zone because these are tough yards down here. 260 yards, 31 carries from Alvinado and a flag on the field. I wonder if Lackawanna has too many players on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. We'll see, 11.45. This is a big call right here. Looks like it's against Lackawanna. Bill Moore is saying no. Uh, did he substitute it properly? Encroachment on the defense. At the distance, still first down. Bill Moore doesn't agree with that call. It was defensive encroachment. You could see Moore arguing. He definitely does not agree with that call. This really sets them up at the two and a half. Yeah, I, think, I think he's going to get the referee to, to go over and... He's trying to... Moore's trying to get the referee's attention, but it's not working. It's unfortunate and for that's Coach a, Moore. Yeah, that's a huge difference. You put him up a little bit closer. Well, if they score, it will be tied, and they'll have to kick the extra point for the lead. Here's Maldonado. Maldonado burrowing in. Touchdown. And he put his head down and would not be denied. That is pure determination right there, Walt, because he was hit pretty much at the line of scrimmage, and he carried not only the Lackawanna defense, I think a couple of his offensive linemen along with him for a two-yard run. That's a tough two yards. He's had over 7,000 in his career, but those are probably... Uh -oh. And Joe West shaking up, flipping off the field. Not good signs right there. With the trainer, Sal Balachino. Arcara is two for two on extra points. Low snap, kick is up. No good! The kick is no good. Off to the left. A uh, big rush, it was not a good snap or hold. And Arcara, who usually is pretty solid, he had 45 during the season and two in this game, missed it. He got a good foot on it though. He, he definitely had enough of a foot to get it through there. But like I said, he pulls it a little bit to the left. There's the coaching staff. That's, I think that's Coach Palladino, his assistant. Boy, you talk about huge Mark Collins. Well, I'll tell you, here's a look at it right here. The right up the gut. Watch this run. This is sheer determination. And we'll also see Joey West on the bottom of the pile right there because he comes up with an injury, which could be, you know, which could be a big play. It's a big play for Harrison to score. Now, here's the... Watch the snap, Mark. You are exactly right, Walt. That snap, and that's, you know, you got to have the timing. There's Bill Moore, though. He's still talking to the to the officials on that. He did not like that call. 
Joe West being attended to by Sal Balacino. This interesting story on this trainer for Lackawanna. He joined them after the Grand Island game three years ago, the second game of the season. He's never seen the Steelers lose since he's been their trainer. And I didn't see that game, and I joined the crew here three years ago, so I've never seen him lose but you're either. But you're not, you're an announcer, you're not part of the <laughs> team. He's part of the team, he's a trainer. And there's a look at Bill Moore, and he was not happy about that call, because they said, that's a big difference. You give him a couple extra yards with Maldonado in the background, I mean, in the backfield, you know, he wouldn't have gotten the end zone if they were five yards off. But they get that close what way. does Maldonado not do? Now he kicks off, he does everything. That's this is a mistake end. sometimes, but oh, Lackawanna, did not do much with the kickoffs in this game. In fact, they loved one and gave up a turnover on it when they didn't cover the ball early. And this time, Angel Burgos sort of disrespected, I guess, uh, the leg strength. Let's go down to Chris Brown. Just for an update on Joe West's ankle injury, guys. The trainer asked him, do you want me to tape it for you? He said, no, I don't want the tape job. I want to just try to walk it off. And he's back in the game right now. Back upstairs to you. Oh, okay, thank you. Nice job, Chris Brown. And it's surprising, kicking off deep to Lackawanna has not hurt Harrison at all in this game. That's one of the strategies we thought might backfire on them because in Western New York, nobody kicks the ball deep to Lackawanna on kickoffs. 2020 with 11.36 to go in regulation. This might go right down to the last play, maybe even overtime. We'll see what happens. Here's West, getting outside. He's got a crease. 25 yard line, he's dragged out of bounds. Joe West, a gain of five. More five yards at a time and you want to milk the clock? And you see Joey West, and you just had that report from Chris, he said, I don't want it taped, because a lot of times, you know, you tape it up and it's too tight, and it just, you know, you just don't feel right. And Joey just says, I'm gonna go with it, you know, a little bruise or not. There's a look at his counterpart right there, and there's the scoring summary, four plays, 23 yards. A minute 46, and Maldonado with a two-yard run, a tough two yards, but the kick failed with the bad snap, so we're tied to 20. Maldonado, 266 yards, 32 carries. Five yards on that play. Second down and five. Quarterback Randolph in a lot of trouble, and he's buried. A busted play. That was a busted play. He was looking to pass. He was looking to pass, but well, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't understand. He's trying to throw that little out to Burgos. Why? When you got Joey West in the backfield, he just starts lighting this place up in the third quarter. He, yeah, he just ran the ball for eight yards, and you try and throw to a guy, and you got Jones and Wilder in the backfield. And why, why this? Why this? Well, it's not like it's going to go for a touchdown. Burgos is covered. 14 carries, 16 carries, 139 for Joe West. Wilder, one carry, one yard. Jones, two carry, one yard. Third and nine, double reverse to Burgos. And a pass. And Angel trying to get out of the jam. And he can't. And he's crushed at the 25-yard line. They had a double reverse on, and Burgos was looking downfield to Sweeney, who I thought was open. Well, I don't, yeah, I just don't understand. It's the fourth quarter. You got the football. You got to sustain a drive. Here's a double reverse, and the guy you got handed off is Joey West. He's the guy you want running the football. He's taking the ball first, first, you know, first play in the series. He gets what? Six, seven yards. This is a game where you're going to ground it out. You know Harrison is going to give the football to their back. You got to go with the bread and, you know, you got to go with the, to the you got to go with your horses. The fails back deep at his 45. Ray Braxton, the freshman, to punt from his 12. Rushes on. A low kick, a returner. Low kick toward the fail. At the 45, a good move. Now the other way. Another good move to the 45, down to the 43. A very nice return by Chris DeFeo. I'll tell you another thing, Walt. When you, you know, the play calling is, is so important. You keep the ball on the ground. You've got to move the chains. It's field position. You know, you pull some of those plays, and now look what's happening. You, you know, like I said, you're shortening up the field, and this kid's dangerous when you got to punt to him. And he just puts on a great move right here. Let him split the defenders, just get up field, and puts his team in at the 40-yard line. And like I said, this is field position. Sammy Maldonado is licking his chops right now. Started doing a, a one-two dance there with Angel Burgos until he got away from him. Then he got away from Hank Dorowski and went downfield. 
from the 42-yard line. That's where they spot it in Steeler territory. Maldonado really get outside. They grab him and drag him down hard. Jones throws him to the turf. No gain. Deion Jones. Does that show a little strength from Deion Jones? We talked about Maldonado, how strong he is, and Jones comes up at 5'11", 185 pounds, and just manhandles Sammy Maldonado. Good play to just push him to the outside. And look at Jones. Just, this is a championship game. Boy, this is like a heavyweight fight, but I'll tell you one thing. Neither team giving an inch right now. Uh, Mark, do you trust your quarterback as the game winding down to pass the football through video? Nine minutes to go. Well, like He's said, only thrown the ball once. In motion. He throws the ball. Backward pass. That's a fumble. That ball's loose. That's a backward pass. That was a fumble all the way. And that's a huge loss back to midfield. That was a lateral, folks. Well, then again, Wall, well, see, I, I just don't agree with it. I mean, when you got only eight minutes to go in a football game, it's field position. If you're going to run the football and you don't get the first down, at least you keep running that football. Because Maldonado is averaging, what's he got? Almost, oh, he's got over 300 yards. Two, he 266 <laughs> yards. So you throw him a little flare pass. I don't know. Well, that was a lateral. A loss on the play. A huge loss. Nine-yard loss. Third and 19. Third and 18. Now they have to pass the football. Uh, they may give it to him again here. And yeah. Maldonado's got it. He needs 19. He might get it. He gets to the outside. He's got the first down. Flag on the play. Melton out to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! A flag back at the 30, and this might come back. And quite frankly, I didn't see anyone in the area. There was the Harrison one shirt. There was one guy left for Harrison. And again, Walt, the point that I made earlier, why throw the block? when you got Sammy Maldonado in the open field, you are not going to attack him. They How? cannot believe it on the Harrison sideline. Why throw the block? How in the world can Lackawanna or any team allow a first down on third and 19 Holy. on a run? But on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still, so what down was it? Still third down, still third down. So wipe out that gain. It will go for a gain of approximately 20 yards, 20 yards on the pickup. And then it will be pushed back. Here's a look at it right here, Maldonado. Again, there, they get a little shot. Now look at, like I said, why make that block, Walt? He had his back turned. Maldonado was almost by him in the picture right there. Third and 10 now after everything sorted out. But 7.57 to go. But a case in point about why you give it to your good back when it's late in the game and you don't throw the football. Third down and 10. 7.57 to go. Well, they gained 20 yards on the play. You credit Maldonado with 20 yards and then 10 yards back I'll tell you, on the better, penalty. We're going to key in on Maldonado right here. This is it. Third down play, and they're going to pass. Servideo looks, throws wide open. Caught! DeFeo's got it at the 10. What a pass. And Maldonado's back near midfield. Well, he's, he's exhausted. exhausted. <laughs> he just ran 50 yards or so of the play before, and that's a, that's a good call right there, Walt. Maldonado's too winded to even carry the football. Video just with a nice play fake, and they catch Lackawanna inching up a little bit. And DeFeo, he's already showed the speed on the punt special teams that he had, and he splits the receivers and makes a sure catch there. You see, he didn't try to run with the football. He just wanted to bring it down because he knew he had the first down, and they were in scoring territory right now with only seven minutes to go. That was a beautiful pass by Paul Servideo. Let's take a look at it as he hits DeFeo right in good, stride. Good play action. He splits. That's Lee right there, and I believe Wilder from the other side. That's a good call right there. You know, they give the ball to Maldonado. Everyone's probably looking for him to go back to him, but he's too winded. Well, you know, actually, that wasn't that bad of coverage. Dwayne Ingram was the guy actually right there, number 19. He was pretty close to that play. It was just a perfect pass. Well, what a crazy series of events. They're at the 10-yard line with 7.28 to go in regulation. This is a real nail-biter for either team. We said, Mark, that this might go down to the final play of the game, and it very well might. Uh, yeah, I got it. 
I got to think that Harrison is going to get in the end zone here because with Maldonado, they just haven't been able to stop him on the ground. But, you know, Lackawanna is going to get the ball back with plenty of time. But again, Walt, now Lackawanna is forced, you know, what do they do when they get the football back? Last series was the series I thought they really had to run the football and, you know, try and regain some of that field position and, you know, not throw the football. It's with the backs that they have, if you can't get 10 yards with those three in the backfield, you know, then I guess... Now we're going to look at the Maldonado meter. It's been pressed hard this game, Mark. Yeah, and you talked about in the opening, you know, we were arguing about how good he was, but, you know, can, you said contain him to 200 yards, and he's at 276. The real thing that kind of leveled it out, though, is he did turn the football over to us. And you know the Steelers will be hacking at the football, trying to force a third fumble. First down, just outside the 10, Maldonado is hit, now he squirts through, and he's to the five yard line where Rashawn Lee brings him down. You know, this is the sixth consecutive year that section six has made the championship game in the B class, and they have won it the last three years, with Lackawanna the last two, and then in 96. Right here though, Walt, he just wants it more. Sammy Maldonado wants it more. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Lackawanna should have stopped him at the line of scrimmage. And he just wants his state championship. Second down and goal. 6.55 to go. Well, actually, they can get a first down. Second and five. Maldonado looking for the end zone. Touchdown! Sammy Maldonado. He's got all their score. Yeah, well, that's the guy you give the football to. He got you to the dance. You stick with him. Five-yard touchdown run. Third TD today. It equals his count for last year in the championship, but now it's a little different story because they're up by six. I tell you, he's at one heck of a football player. But again, the game a long way from over. The lineup for the extra point, apparently. Okay to there. Now, this is what I said on while. When you get down here, you got Joey West in the backfield, you got a Maldonado on the backfield. They're only three yards out for a, you know, trying to throw the football. Wow, this is whatever. a surprise. They are going for two. They're worried about Lackawanna scoring and winning the game with a two-point conversion if they kick a one. And they go to Maldonado. And Maldonado is in. That's the play that you call when you get down there and you need two. That's the play that won them the football game right there, that off tackle. Give his offensive line a lot of credit. Uh, I like that strategy. I mean, you don't want to be sitting there with a seven-point lead and knowing lack of one if they score, we'll go for now, two. I, I like the strategy that you know you got Sammy Maldon out on the backfield and they haven't stopped him all day and you just run him off there. You don't need any trick plays here. Well, we talked about it last year, right? Why you wouldn't go for two every time and look give right it to there. Sammy Maldonado. Nice job by his offensive line, but Sammy Maldonado is just, like I said, he is just too physical for lack of one's defense. He has had one tremendous game, and he is one tired young man, but there's a lot of time left. 6.47 to go in regulation, but Lackawanna, which seemingly righted themselves after down 14-0 and grabbed a 20-14 lead, now trail again, 28-20. Take a look at Coach Bill Moore. He's looking at his playlist there, and this is a tough situation. They haven't been here in a long time right now, Walter. Again, like I said, there's a guy that wearing number eight on his jersey that is just as good as Sammy Maldonado and can do the same thing for Lackawanna that Maldonado's done for Harrison. Well, Lackawanna has a way of pulling games out. I remember the right Hornell now. game three years ago when they were down, but that was earlier in the fourth quarter, and they scored a touchdown to win it. And I'll tell you right now, Wall, I don't care where the kick goes, I'd get it in Joey West's hands, even if he, you know, if you got to hand it off to him. Cicero is kicking off now. Not a good kick at all. Taken by the up man for Lackawanna. Look at this. That's Calvin, isn't it? That's the freshman. 40. That's the freshman. Calvin Rice. That's Calvin Rice. This is the, the heir apparent in the backfield. Calvin Rice right up to midfield. In fact, he's to the 49-yard line of Harrison. That's great field position. And you see his coach. Talked to his coach last night from the JV team. He said, this kid's a good one, boy. He's going to be a good one when he gets up. And he said, Bill Moore is not going to let me keep him next year. He's <laughs> going to be a sophomore. Big play right there, though. Here's the scoring summary. Six plays, 42 yards, 
2 minutes 53 seconds, and Maldonado for his third touchdown, and the two-point conversion this time is good. Well, yeah, Lackawanna needing to answer the scoring drive of Harrison. And they go to their main man, West. West getting a crease to the 45-yard line, a gain of four. Ted Manuel, gain of four, first down. That's what happened in the last series. He gained about five on first down. I mean, you add it up. Four and three plays is what? Twelve. <laughs> Here's Joey West. And right now, I'll tell you, Harrison has got to be a little bit tired because this has been a battle out there. Both teams have been battling, and their defense has got to be a bit tired. And Joey West, like I said, it doesn't take much for him to get through there and get in the end zone. 6.09 to go in regulation. Harrison by eight points, 28 to 20. Lackawanna facing his second down and seven. And here's Deion Jones. He almost broke this. He's inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Have we seen that play yet today? I don't think we have, Walt. And that's, I, I talked to you before the game. I thought he would have been the difference today because he had that quick hitter. And when you you got Joey West and Wilder, the key and on, this kid's a guy that can do it for you. And boy, he just does. He, he hits the hole, I think, quicker than all three of them. A big run right there. Maraglino saved the touchdown. Watch Maraglino, 45, just grab him by the ankles as he's trying to twist away. From the 33-yard line, the Steelers threatening. 5.37 to go. And a pass. Randolph to pass. Looking in trouble. Now he's hit and dropped for a sack. Sacked on the play by Calandrusio. Ryan Calandrusio and Vizigano. Well, here's Calandrusio. I am totally dumbfounded. I don't know why they are throwing the football. They, why are they throwing football? I mean, they have been running the last two series. They've been running at five, six yards a clip. Randolph's dropping back. Like like they're down by like they're down by three touchdowns. They're well, down by eight points with Joey West in the backfield. Loss of three. Play action pass. They faked it to Jones. And here's Jones. Jones hit after a quick burst. Gain of three back to the original line of scrimmage. So you run that on first down and you're second and seven. Give him four yards. Third down and nine. Even though Sammy Maldonado's had a huge day, the biggest play of the game has got to be Servideo's third down pass to DeFeo. That kept that last Harrison touchdown drive alive. The lack of one of 10 yard line. Third and nine. Here's Joey West. Joey West looking for a crease. Joey West! Joey West! 15! 10! Joey West! Down to the seven yard line. Wow! Did he run hard on that play? That's as hard as you'll see any high school kid run. I'll tell you one thing, Walt. I, I, I'll tell you one thing. I am afraid to say that if they gave Joey West the football 20 to 25 times today, the score wouldn't be 28-20. I'll tell you right now, Joey West deserves to get this football three times in a row and get himself in the end zone. They the problem stop. here with Lackawanna, Mark, if they score, they have to get the two. Or they might think of an onside kick if they're not successful. First, they have to score. From the seven, first and goal with 3.53 to go. Mark wants West to get it. Wilder gets it. Wilder looking for the corner. There's a flag on the play. Wilder's in. But this is going to come back. Flag against Lackawanna. Now, Harrison was hurt by flags earlier. I want to call this too premature, yeah, but it looks gonna, like it's against Lackawanna. He's got Deion Jones. He's going to get Jones. Looked like a good block from up here, but if he's going to call it, he was looking right at him. He's going to call a clip on him. It's a tough angle to get a clip on, but number 20 for Harrison. Clipping on the offense. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Matt Miller gets up. He gets upfield quick on the snap right here, Walt. Matt Miller comes off the ball, and he's upfield, and you see Deion Jones right in the corner of your screen. I'll tell you, that's a, that's a tough call right there, boy. He was coming upfield, and looks like he caught the inside of his shoulder pad. There's a look at it right here. See, he's upfield. Ah, I'll tell you, that's, he can do that. He, he pushed him with, you can use your offensive hands. If he pushed him on the front of the shoulder pad. Tough call goes against Lackawanna, puts the ball way back to the 26-yard line. Here's a reverse and a pass. Angel Burgos is in trouble. 
Now he rushes it upfield. He's to the 20. He is hit hard and down at the 18-yard line. That double reverse pass, they love to work that play with Angel Burgos. Yeah, but it hasn't, it hasn't, well, it hasn't worked. <laughs> They've tried it three times and they haven't gotten the pass off yet. And you, I mean, and, it, and an injury to Sammy Maldonado. They needed 26 look yards. At it right here. Now, they tried this play three times today and it hasn't worked. It's been a broken play and a lot of times a broken plays. He's, you're lucky you don't turn the ball over here because he's getting hit from these big guys from not even seeing him coming, boy. It's a nice job by Burgos just to get back and get some positive yardage. But Sammy Maldonado, he's been on the carpet about four or five times today. Uh, he does not look too good right there, but he's a warrior. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This kid, right, he deserves, boy, all the credit in the world for just staying in the football game because he's been carrying the ball a lot. But, Walt, the other thing is with him, you know, he's not going to give up. He doesn't want to come out of this football game. Here's a look at him. See maybe if he, where he got hurt here. He's coming across, and he might have just got landed on at the end of the play. There's Maldonado right there. Comes in with his shoulder. I don't know. It didn't look too bad from that angle, but maybe he got the wood knocked out of him. Well, anyway, we are live at the Carrier Dome. Lackawanna's in trouble. They're down by 8, 28-20. However, they're on the mark. They just had a touchdown taken off the board. A questionable call. Too, I mean. that, that was definitely a questionable call. I mean, on that play, Deion Jones, I mean, he, you can you know, you can use your hands to block, and it didn't look like he got him in the back. You could actually see his hands on the front of the shoulder pad. You were going to look at to look at his leg. I'm sure the college scouts aren't too happy to see this guy in the carpet. But, boy, what a, what a football game he's played. Checking out his ankle area, too. But with three minutes and 26 seconds to go, while he said if Black Warner gets in, here's a look at it right there. Maybe they land on his ankle. Well, the thing now we have to go is Maldonado has helped to his feet. You have to remember when Harrison scored their last touchdown, they elected to go for two, and they made it. And that is huge at this point. Even if Lackawanna scores, they still have to get a two-point conversion. And if they do score, and don't give Joey Russell the football, I'll tell you one thing. They gave it to Maldonado. It's an eye for an eye in this football game because the last guy standing, you got to give him the football. That's right there, right there. But I'll tell you, right now, Maldonado, not on defense. That's a big plus two for Lackawanna. Watch. They're going to run the football. Now you can run, you know, almost anywhere you want to run because Maldonado is really the strength of that defense. Second down and 19. You know that original penalty, too. That was a 19-yarder. Got Joey West flanked out again. Second down play. Ran up to pass again on second down. Rushes on. Randolph throws yeah. wide open. Touchdown! Mike Sweeney! Mike Sweeney! Wide open. And Lackawanna is within two. How well, did he get uh, so open? I'll tell you one thing. You know, I've been saying you gotta run. I gotta give him a lot of credit. They stuck with this kid Randolph, and there's the coach talking to him. Like he said, he's got a world of confidence in this kid. And, they stick with him and they let him throw the football. Boy, that time he delivers it to an unlikely receiver, Sweeney, with the 19-yard touchdown pass. You know, who would have ever thought of that? Might be Mike Sweeney. Now we get down to the two point. First touchdown pass this year. I know he caught a two point conversion. Now for the tie, Lackawanna needing to get in. I think Harrison is going to call a timeout here. They see Lackawanna in a shotgun with Joey West, and that's not a bad formation right there. So Harrison takes a timeout. In that game. Here's the lineup. Shotgun. This game went crazy back and forth. From the shotgun, Randolph. What will they call? Here they give it right to West. West, he's in trouble. And now West makes a move and they stopped him. Oh, man. A great defensive play by Veet. Veet comes up with a huge play. West down and he's hurt. So with 3.13 to go, Harrison leading by two. We get a look at it there, Walt. They try, you know, they try a little bit of trickery out of that when they try the shotgun with Randolph and the shotgun, they snap it to Joey West. I just like get the, you know, take the snap and pitch it to him and let him get a good start to the corner with a blocker. And West is up. There's Veet who made the big play. He was the MVP lineman 
last week in their big win. And that's a big tackle, uh, you know, open field with Joey West. But like I said, I, I just, I like the, I like to hand off and pitch it to him and let someone, you know, you get some lead blockers out there. Now the question here, see, be, they snap it to him, but look at who do they have blocking for him? See, Wilder and Deion Jones aren't even in the picture. They're over on the left side. Well, actually, Maldonado made the play. Deep made the tackle. Well, that's the probably Maldonado. Two. Is that him down? On the... No, Maldonado made the play and slowed him up at the six, or else he would have gotten in. No, what I'm saying is that Maldonado on the. I think that's going to be him down there. You see here, like I said, this is the touchdown pit. No, this is the. That's the double yeah, reverse. Yeah, that's the double reverse. That one was one, like I said, they tried that quite a few times. And this is really kind of, it was a good play by Burgos, though, to get him down there you and to put him, him back in the so position where they could tell him to talk me through the highlights? I'm not near a monitor. Get the end zone on the next play. Now the question's going to be after this injury is all I think settled, that's will right. Lackawanna... I think that's Maldonado down again. Is Lackawanna going to kick off deep with two timeouts, or will they try the onside kick right away with 3.13 to go? No, no. Well, if this is Maldonado, like I said, if he's not going to play, kick it deep, get your defense out there, stop and get the ball back. Well, a two-point conversion in the kicking game has come back to haunt Lackawanna in this one. Last year, that, that is, is Maldonado. Yeah. Let's go down to Chris Brown with this report. Well, I'll tell you, Walt, we get luck with uh, Maldonado on the, on the uh, turf right here. Like I said, now now I think they got to kick the football deep. Boy, they might have to get a, a, a stretcher out here for Looks like that's what they're Maldonado. Doing. Now, that's a shame. That is a shame because, you know, this kid, boy, He's meant everything to this football team, and for him not to be able to finish this football game, and, you know, like I said, God forbid that Lackawanna comes back to win this one because without him on the field, there's a shot now that they stop Harrison. Lackawanna gets the football back one what a, more time. What a lot of heart and determination just to play that last down because if he's not in that play, they probably don't stop Lackawanna. He's the guy that fouled up the whole play at the six-yard line. And we're going to come back with more action live from the Carrier Dome. You won't want to miss the exciting conclusion of this game. 313 remaining in regulation. Harrison 28 and Lackawanna 26. Well, Maldonado being attended to and Sammy uh, obviously has fairly serious injury if they have to take him off by a stretcher. It looks like his left ankle, the same ankle that was bothering him a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, but you know, one thing you can say about this kid, I mean, you know, he's as tough as they get. You see the tape on the ankle. He's got that almost taped up where he can't even walk, and that was because he wanted to come out and play on that two-point conversion wall. Like I said, he, he's the one. Yeah, and, and there's a look at Sammy Molinato, I'll tell you. You got to tip your hat to this kid. He came out injured, had it taped up just to play that two-point conversion, and he was the one that really turned it inside, so his linebacker could tackle Joey West short of the end zone. And you know, not only did he do it on offense, he did it on defense today. And he is—he's a warrior, that kid. 37 carries, 286 yards for Maldonado, three touchdowns. Played well on defense. So in the last three playoff games close to a thousand yards well <laughs> unbelievable but what? a big factor time against Lackawanna with 313 to go they are down by two there's Maldonado Sintezi's getting set to kick off Lackawanna has two timeouts remaining and they're down by two points their it options are to kick deep or to try an onside kick it looks like they're going with the onside kick probably thinking if they don't get it they still can maybe stop them and get the football back I think kick it deep and Harrison has 10 people up, so they kick it deep, very deep. And Matt Miller has it near his 10 yard line. He's up to the 20, and Matt Miller is hit hard and down near the 32 yard line. Well, a pretty good kickoff by Dave Sintezzi. Now with 3.07 to go in regulation, Lackawanna needs a stop, and then they need a score. Eric Alino is going to be the guy they're going to want to get the football to. Here's the return right here. Miller, he's had a decent game. This kid's a good athlete. Miller, good return right here. Just sure to hold on to the football. You don't want to be 
turn it over right now, but like I said, right now it's up to the headsy quarterback. Sir Video is really, it's all on his shoulders right here. He's got to well, all the right one plays fans are on their feet cheering for the defense. Mike Sweeney and players on the sideline trying to get them fired up. See if they can handle it without Maldonado and hit hard behind the line of scrimmage and getting a yard is Arcara. Three yeah. minutes to go. You see the difference right there between Arcara and Maldonado. That's the first time porowski has been able to take the back down one-on-one -on -one today because it's not Maldonado. That was a tackle that wasn't being made by the Lackawanna Steelers all day because Maldonado was just too powerful but right now I said they got a nice shot at it right here Walt that was a big stop on first down puts him in second and long you know you know that Harrison doesn't want to put this football in the air they don't want to turn this thing over so they're going to try and run this football but like you said Servidio had probably the biggest play of the game with the pass that he had to, to fail over the middle so that he did I think he did he caught everyone by surprise it was a perfect pass Clock down to 258 remaining. You look at Paul Fitzroy. So I wouldn't count, you know, I wouldn't count, uh, there's a look at Coach Art Troy Lowe. I wouldn't count it out that, you know, he'd give the green light to his quarterback to throw on a third down situation. We'll see what happens here on second. I don't think they'll put it up now, but if they're forced to, they may put the football up. But you have to remember, if they get a first down, they get a first down, the game's over. One first down and Lackawanna with only one timeout left, they'd be in huge trouble. A gain of only a half a yard on that play. Second down. Unlikely they'll pass. The blitz is oh. oh, big hit. Sintezi. And luckily, Arcara held on to the football. You are right about that, Walt. That was a train collision right there. Now, that's the Sintezi that I've seen play. This kid, he just reads it, boy, and just reads this one like a book and comes in there. Watch this collision right here. You're lucky. Like you said, he did lucky not to fumble that football because Intenzi was there and as soon as he took the handoff and boy, what a collision yeah he held the ball down low and had his two hands around it this is the destruction hit of the game that was a sweet hit by Sintezi but now we're in the situation we just talked about third down third and 12 you know do you put it up in the air and you risk the interception or do you just kick the football and rely on the defense. Now look at this is the same situation Bill Moore was in last year. There was four minutes on the clock, fourth and eight though, and he fakes the punt. Now it's a tough situation for Coach Troilo. Third and 12, do we throw the football or do we punt it, you know, just run it? If we don't get the first, punt it and, and rely on our defense. What do you do? Well, I wouldn't pass it, but <laughs> I'm not a football coach. I'm more of a baseball but, man, but I wouldn't pass it. As Bill Moore said last year, it's the state championship, you come here to win. But they if they do pass it and make the first down, it's third and 13, they win the game. I formation. All the fans on their feet. Arcara is stopped after a gain of two, and the Steelers now will receive a punt. So he played it conservative. Last year, Bill Moore was the gambler, and he played it conservative. And now right now, he's going to rely on his defense. And I tell you, the big key, Maldonado, is on the sideline, and he is their best defensive player. Arcara there, just holding on to the ball, sure. And Lackawanna, I'll tell you, give that defense some credit. They did their job. Now it's up to the offense. And Maldonado's their punter, remember. And he's out of the game, so that is a very, very good point. He will not be able Look to punt him. the he's football. Trying, he just got up out of his... He got off the stretcher. Maldonado, he does not want to stay out of this football game. A low snap. Seattle's kick. Line drive, handled by Wilder. He fumbles it. He fumbles it again. Harrison might have the football. Harrison's ball. Melvin Wilder thought he had more time than he did, and he coughed up the football. And there's Miller. What a shame for the Lackawanna Steelers, their crowd son. Wilder had a lot of time to pick that ball up. But I'll tell you, the crowd, here's a look at it right here. He drops the punt, and he's just too, look at He is looking at the defenders coming down. You cannot, you cannot do that. While he did that on the kick, he takes his eye off the ball, and he's looking at the guys coming down. You just got to get on that football. Well, that was a gift for Harrison. It wasn't meant to be for Lackawanna the third time, and it appears Harrison will win the football game with 1.57 remaining timeout Harrison. 
the defense worked so hard to get that ball back. And I'll tell you, that was set up too. They had plenty of time to return that football. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Walt, uh, like I said, minute 57, there's a look at Coach Bill Moore. He's got to be a little upset about over this one because they had their chance. But, you know, I'll tell you one thing. I've only been here three years. I've got to know Bill Moore over three years. And I'll tell you one thing. He is a terrific football coach. But, you know, I'm more impressed with the way he relates to these kids on this team. I mean, this is not an easy job. And, you know, this guy right here, his record speaks for himself on the football field. And, you know, I heard some talk that, they were thinking about not, you know, asking him back last this year to coach after winning two, two state championships, and I don't, you know, I don't know how that could ever happen. You know, like I said, I've seen him over the years, the way he, he is with these kids and at the meetings, you know, and he's been good to us and his record as a football coach, you know, and that's that's politics, you know, and and you you really have to leave the politics, especially out of the high school sports, you know, because I'll tell you, you're not going to find a better man than Bill Moore. He's also the athletic director at Lackawanna High School. Been around a long time. Tremendous football coach and deservedly should be on and should be honored. Not only stay on, be honored. 37 game winning streak. Argolino, first down, 20. Down to the 15 yard line. Big run right there, but be awful careful, big fella, that you don't you don't turn the football over. Yeah, he broke it into the open, and how many times you see that, you get tackled from behind, and here he is, right up through the middle. Like I said, big guy, hang on to it. They go for it right there, but he doesn't see you. Oh, right there, Lee should have popped that football out from behind him. See, he drops it right there when he hits the turf. Well, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if the Steelers let him score on that play. That would be their only chance to win this game. And it's fortunate that he didn't take it in the end zone. I'll tell you why. Now we have flags on. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, man. they should have just let him go. If he scores, it's an eight-point game, and they have to make the extra point to secure the win. That's a good point, and I'll bet you... I'll bet you right now he's bringing his quarterback over to say, hey, we don't want to get in the end zone right here. We want to run the clock out because we get in the end zone and we don't get the extra point. We're only up by eight points. That's a... That's a terrific point. Yeah, you probably won't see them run a, a play from scrimmage again. They'll just kneel on the ball. And there's a look at the other sideline and Coach Moore's opponent. This one, Coach Art Troilo, and, you know, a well-deserved victory for his team. I mean. and, and his staff, some of the people you know, you have to feel happy for Art Troilo. Steve Williams, Rick Palladino. They'll just sit on the football. 1-11 to go. You know, they suffered a very tough loss to Lackawanna last year. And, and Lackawanna, I really don't know what to say about this game, except it was there for the taking for either team. And it ended up with Harrison getting the victory in the championship. But Lackawanna had their shots. I mean, that was a horrible yeah. mistake by Wilder at the end, but he's a high school player, and it happened. Well, you know, if I'll tell you one thing. You know, if, if Lackawanna won this football game, they were very fortunate because they got outplayed for them. Physically, they got outplayed. They had some big plays, Lackawanna did well for some big touchdowns, but you know, the way the football game is played, it's black, you know, it's block and tackle. And Sammy Maldonado was just, you know, physically just too tough for Lackawanna, and they deserve to win this football game, Harrison. And it was a tremendous football game to watch. Very exciting. He said it could have won either way. Lackawanna, a very gracious team in victory and defeat because of Moore and his staff. And you know, you really got to feel for the Lackawanna team, but you got to be happy for that squad right there, the Harrison Huskies and coaching staff. Congratulations to all of you and all the fans in Harrison. And enjoy. The Lackawanna's chance for a three-peat will not happen, but they gave it everything they had. I don't know where Sammy Maldonado's at in the midst of all this, but boy, they get a shot of him. Like I said, he got up off the stretcher when he knew Lackawanna was going to get that football back. That well, was a seesaw game. Harrison jumped in front, 14-0. Lackawanna came back, scored 20 straight points, had the lead 2014, looked in good shape at that point, then fell behind. 28 to 20. Then the key play, Lackawanna scoring, and 
and not getting the two-point conversion. And Lackawanna still with one last shot. If they get the football, if Wilder just falls on the ball at his own 40, they only have to go 60 yards or maybe kick a field goal in the last 140 to win the game. And with Lackawanna's weapons, that could have easily happened. Yeah, there's no question about it. I just think there's a look at him right there. See, he wanted, he wanted to get back on the football field, Sammy Maldonado. He can't even walk. But I tell you, it's got to be a great feeling for him. What a great way to go out his senior year. There's plenty of football ahead for this kid. I'll tell you, you'll be watching him at some major college in the next couple of years. He is just like we said in the opening, bro. He is the real deal. Will we ever see another run with the playoffs like the lack of honest years is completed? Well, you know, like I said, that's kind of sad, you know. I mean, someone's got to lose, and it's kind of sad that Lackawanna, they had that winning streak, but you could just feel that sooner or later it had to come to an end, and unfortunately today it did not. Well, the final score, 28-26 here on HTTV. The Harrison Husky, the champs. A cable vision. Well, what a ball game. 28-26. Only two points separated these two teams this year. Only four points. Last year when Lackawanna won 22-18. Mark Collins, a tremendous finish. Crazy football game. Could have won either way. Yeah, it could have won either way in the fourth quarter there, Walt. Uh, like I said, I... I just, you know, have to give all the credit to Harrison. You know, they lost a tough one last year. They get back here this year, and they deserve to win this football game. You know, like I said, it's played, it's a physical game, and they were physical offensively. Maldonado was, you know, he's spectacular. A lot of credit, though, goes to Lackawanna. I mean, that's a tough to try and repeat three times. It's never been done before, and, you know, they, they gave it everything they had. Well, Lackawanna, you know, they had one last shot at it. They were down 28-20. They score and then they need to get a two-point conversion. They don't get it. Then with Maldonado on the bench, they force a punt situation, and Wilder just misplays the punt into a fumble and a turnover, killing their last shot to win the ball game. And it was unfortunate that it happened like that because I know it, everyone wanted to see. Everyone wanted to see Wilder get on that and give him a shot. But right now, let's go down there and, and watch as Harrison and Lackawanna well-deserved awards for both teams. And we're going to look at some of the awards now. That's Bill Moore. Uh, he gets the runners up. That's an unusual position for Bill to be in. <laughs> but I tell you, and even last night we talked to him. He said, hey, well, we, we I'm talked just to happy to be here. You know, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy for the kids. It's a football game. And, you know, I'm just happy to be here. That's Bill Quick on the left there with the glasses uh, right there, Bill with the box, he's in section six chairman. And Chuck Funky. And Chuck Funky, rather. I mean, that's Chuck Funky. Then, not Chuck Funky, thank you. And now the presentation for the champion of section D, New York State Championship, to Artroilo and the Harrison Huskies. And you know how bad he wanted that water. We talked to him last night. He really felt they should have won the football game last year. And they played well enough to win last year. So they came back here you know, and gave it, you know, gave it all they had. And it was, a, it was good enough to win it today. Well, we said on our way down here that everything has to come to an end at some point. But this was a tough one for Lackawanna to lose. We'll be right back. The Huskies win it by two.